What is up? Welcome back to Bleach Boys. We're doing episodes five through eight of Thousand Year Blood War. We have three weeks left until Bleach Thousand Year Blood War Core 2 returns. Of course, Jose, Pythes, we're all back for another four episodes, even though it seems weird because we're doing five to eight. Yeah, it, it did confuse me, and I was like, wait, maybe I should go one more. Does not seem right at all, but this does conclude... Would, do we call this the first invasion or the second invasion? Because technically they invaded the first time when they killed Sasakibe. It wasn't a full-on was, invasion. Yeah, I'd say it was like a sneak attack. The or first something. invasion. Because, yeah. yeah, then the second one is when they come back, and it's 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 full scale at that point. We yeah. get Yama versus Yuwa. We get all kinds of fights in this one, and it, it wraps up. It was beautiful. I love these episodes. Really, really good. So let's just hop into it, I suppose. Episode 5. We're kicking it off. Uh, first thing first. It truly made me smile seeing how happy everybody was to hear Ichigo was on the way. Yup. That was the highlight of my episode. I was like, aw, I was like, that's so sweet. Especially how everyone's like, Ichigo's on the way. Oh my God, we're saved. Yes. Oh, let's yeah, go. It was awesome. And then it was immediately 180 turned around when I saw Jadambo attacking the research department. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what the fuck? Like, isn't it fucked up that Ichigo's on the cell and he mm-hmm. just hears everybody getting their ass beat, people screaming and shit. And I'm like, oh God, this is. Yeah, that seemed Worst that seemed a little call. bullshit that the phone just miraculously called Ichigo and was like, "Yeah, uh, here's the sound effects of all of your favorite people dying." Like, it, enjoy. It was Akon. He's just like, you know what? I need to motivate yeah. this bitch. It was his last will and testament, and I do like that Mayuri immediately knew Akon did it. I was like, "All right, yep. yeah, cool, 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 love that." Ichigo was already on the phone when he was heading through the Garganta. I thought they stopped for a second where they say like they lost contact. And then all of a sudden it went off again. But maybe I suppose he was on the line the whole time and he was just listening to the research department, just giving giving intel and shit. Yeah. Then we get the letter for Quilgay, which obviously is J for jail. Um, Shouldn't have been anybody, you know, surprised by that. Yeah. And then we get to see the scene that Jose has been waiting for where someone mysteriously cuts down Quilgay. I don't know who it is, but I got so excited. Which I got notes on that reveal later because they don't full (laughs) reveal it. But they show him at the very end of these episodes like a little bit. Straight spoiler. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And then we go into the Biakia versus Asna fight, which I loved. I thought it was very, very good. But, all right, I have a question for you guys. Yep. How different would the fight have been if Biakia let Renji's Bankai get stolen first? Because it seems like in all assets of that fight, Biakia giving away his Bankai was the worst decision that you could have made. The worst. I have notes for that. We can get to that later. Oh, well, my thoughts on it is like, oh, okay, you know, logically, it doesn't make sense. But, he, it, you know, me being like, oh, I'm Biakia right now. I'm like, you know what? I trust Renji enough to take care of this. He's my boy. And I get the sentiment the there. The only but- way it makes sense is that it was a learning moment. And, like, Biakia was like, watch, I'm going to be a good leader here, and I'm going to go first, even though in all aspects of combat and st- strategy – Biakia showed that he could cut Asnot. He should have immediately taken that back and been like, nah, we're not going to do that. I can't wait to get to my notes. I'm so excited when Jose said that. <laughs> <laughs> so then we get, obviously, we see Biakia's fear because he got hit by Asnot's arrows and you know so on and so forth. We get the scene, which I saw all over online when it originally oh, came out, yeah. of Biakia, or Biakia's fear of Rukia basically just fucking decaying and turning into a zombie, which... You know, it was it was well done. That's some Junji shit right there. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. I was, I was like, damn, Kubo did that really well in the manga too. It was a good little, a good little yeah. trope. And then they show like Asa gives this whole scene, right? He's like, yeah, you know, you're kind of being able to take, hold off the fear right now per, through sheer will. And it's like, oh yeah, hell, hell yeah, yeah, that's my boy. But he's like, it'll slowly start crawling onto you like flies. And then you see the flies crawling up Biakia, which was a really cool scene. But then they zoom in on his face and you see the flies go all over his tongue and shit. Yeah, I'm like, that's going into nasty. his mouth. And, and I was like, like, yeah. That's real nasty. I would be more pissed about that. Imagine being breaking out of the fear and it's like, ew, that's <laughs> vomiting everywhere. It's like, it's like, like Sam, you okay? Uh, sorry, I thought, I thought flies flew into my <laughs> yeah, mouth. I, I can't. I swear to God, I saw a thousand flies crawl right into my mouth. That fucking bitch ass not. And then from my perspective, yo, you good? You're just standing there, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, probably the most disgusting thing over all the fear all of that um we get to see as not used in bonzakura so he has full on access of the bankai part of it but he did say that it, he referred to that you can't beat your bankai with just your shikai so does biakia still have access to his shikai abilities they all do it's so just the bankai why does it seem like all of them gave up they just like they're not using their shikais at all is isn't their bankai like the manifestation of the spirit in their sword it's it, it's their strongest weapon yeah you want to fight senbon zakura kagayoshi with just senbon zakura but it's better than fighting it with just nothing 
I mean, Biak is freaking out at this point because he's got the fear. That makes a lot of sense, especially why the uh, all the other captains kind of were just like, well, shit, what do I do now? But it's like even in like, here's where I'm thinking about with this. Hitsugaya's fight, you don't ever see him using his Shikai after the Bankai gets stolen. Where it's like, dude, you can still fling ice and stuff. You can still command the little ice dragon. It's like, why are you not using it? Yeah, you don't have the shitty wings. But it's like, what's the problem? Wait till the second invasion. <laughs> okay. Oh, that is actually there very true. Um, and then, uh, let's see what else I put. Oh, Rukia senses Byakia getting roasted. Okay. And Rukia is fighting the pink hair chick or whoever. I don't give a fuck who she's fighting. Anyways, she turns around and just starts running like normal ass human running to go to where Byakia is. Why is she not flash tipping? Why is she not doing anything faster to get over this? She literally just takes off on a jog. I think it's one of those things where it's like, she realizes that her brother's in mortal danger and she's just like, shit, what do I do? And then in a panic just takes the off. The first running. thing should be going fast. Shouldn't be going for a light jog. You know, I mean, like the Sarah is like a fucking maze. You know how long it take you to get to anywhere with jogging? That's true. Then I have uh, masculine returns, fucking mass, mass ass bitch. Dude, um, he fucking drop kicks Renji dude, so yeah. fucking hard. I saw that. I was like, holy shit, Renji went far. I put that in my notes. I was like, that boy he got dead. launched. He's dead. Like, that is crazy. He went through, like, three buildings or something and then slammed oh in the ground. God. I laughed my ass off when that happened. <laughs> I did, too. I just I wasn't expecting him to go flying mm. that hard. Even when I read it back then, I was like, well, damn. They did a good job, though. You think about it with Byakia's little hole and send him in the ground. They did a great job of, like, keeping him out of the fight for quite a long time. Like, that's a long time in a fight to the death to not be anywhere. And then, you know, he eventually came out because Byakia was busy fucking around. Uh, let's see. We get Byakia's sword breaking when he gets put into the fucking crater, and uh, it was pretty sad. To be completely honest, though, I think Byakia should have died. Oh, yeah, right 100%. There. Like, 100%. 100%. Like, it would have added a lot more to the story, but I totally get it. But I always thought, like, there was some sort of semblance, semblance something, whatever the word is, uh, that when your sword breaks, that's also you dying. I thought that was, like, a thing. And a lot of symbolism where it's like, oh, the sword's broken. It's over. Well, it's like, nah, he's fine. Doesn't Ichigo's Shikai break at one point, too? His Bankai breaks, which we're going to get to later. Well, like, earlier on, right? Yeah. It has to get yeah. fixed. And it was it was a big deal. But they also talk about coming in later where Miuri, the king of getting his fucking Zanpakuto broken, um, he doesn't fix his. He modifies it to yeah. something else each time, which they say it can never be fixed. Uh, a Bankai, at least. But we'll get more into that later. Um, let's see. I put the scene of the crater is very sad, uh, of course. Then we get Kenpachi finally making an appearance, which I didn't realize this until later, but I'm going to bring it up in this part now that Kenpachi's here. Where is Yachiru for, during all this? Have we seen her a oh, single time? Oh, that's totally true. No, she, she was in that assistance captain meeting that they cut out. Oh, you're right. So now because she wasn't in that, it's almost like she just does, she's not in it all. Like, you, yeah. don't, you don't see her. Yeah, I don't think we see her at all this season. Uh, she's off drinking tea or whatever. Okay, we'll take that. Sounds about right for but her. But Kenpachi killed three Stern Raiders. Stern Raider Q, Stern Raider R, and Stern Raider Y. One of them, spoiler alert. Um, which, they're, they're each, one is the question, one is the roar, and one is obviously the yourself. Which, I thought they were pretty cool. I thought they were pretty badass. And I liked Kenpachi kind of regaling on how he did yes. it. Like, yeah, the one guy kept questioning everything. It was annoying me, so I, I took I him ripped out. out his <laughs> yeah. I, that was so graphic. I love that he just reaches yeah. forward and just... The other one grew into a giant monkey. Uh, I cut him down. Yep. And then the other one, I, it took a little bit longer because he turned into me. But I eventually got him. <laughs> it's like, he's, all right. I love how he's just like, so I just had to get stronger than myself. Yeah, so good. That's some uh, Captain Yami shit right there. Yeah, it was really good. I love fucking Kenpachi. Love him. And then we see directly after that, Akon survived the great research development. And they go to some like secondary little glass box research development area. Well, that's like the portal where uh, they open to the... Uh, Wekomundo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, and then we get to the badass parts coming up where uh, we see Hisagi getting absolutely roasted by Stern Raider O, who I thought his ability was really cool. Overkill? That yes. shit is insane. That's really cool. And he even talks about the first time that he was there, he killed 100 people, and then he was able to take down Sasakibe, which Ooh, he immediately fucked fuck up Hisagi. Guy. He was going to die. Yeah. And then he was going to do the same move that killed Sasakibe and uh, Yama shows up. Uh, Dude. I love that. Dude. He's just like, so you're the one who killed my lieutenant. Yeah. So good. And then we get some flashbacks of them younger. Um, the My key key takeaway from that, Sasakibe got Bankai in a month. Somehow. Which is crazy. It's almost Ichigo speeds. And <laughs> Sasuke, Sasakibe only wanted to be useful to Yama. That was the only thing he wanted. That's true. And I thought it was super cool that he says, 
I want to be your right hand man. He's like, oh, you'd have to be my student. He's like, no, because then I'd be just like you. You yeah. need someone who could cover your ass. Yeah, who could fill in the spots you don't cover. It's exactly. like, dude. That's loyalty right there. Yeah, they did such a good job for killing him off and giving him no screen time. I think Kubo did a fantastic job of kind of like, you know, give him a little bit of a moment. Yeah. A little tiny bit of a moment. Because I like that uh, push. Outside of that, man, I mean, you think Sasuke, he gets roasted by Ichigo when he shows up immediately. Absolutely fucking roasted. Yep. And it's just, he never gets a moment after that. Never. Of course, uh, oh, there's a Stern Raider O does fucking Sasuke's Bankai, which is purple. So I don't know if in the flashback it was yellow. Going forward, it was purple. So I don't know if Sasuke trained his Bankai further so it was purple or if they changed it for the Stern Raider using it. But I thought that was interesting. And then Yama just one shots his ass and immediately roasts him. I love that. When he just he what he pulls the sword out, just incinerates him. And I yeah. love I love the image and everything. Yeah. And it's like your bankai isn't this week. It's like, damn, Yama might have some of the coldest lines in the whole series. Yeah. He it, comes in swinging. I love how he's way. like, Oh, I feel for you, man. He's like, This guy <laughs> yeah. doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. There's a lot, and I think it might be with the CG and the effects that they're using, but there's a lot of people getting hit by these effects and just standing there. Like Biakia happened to a lot, he gets yep. hit by the pedals, and he's not being hit while he's in it, but he's just like standing there. And then Yama did the same thing. He got hit by it. Didn't do anything while he was standing in it, but then it fades. And it's like, oh, he has all this damage to his shirt and his cloak and all that shit. Um, and then he gets uh, goes to Sagi and tells him, like, do not worry. Every last member of the Rebel Army, I will slaughter myself, which I got to stop it right here. Imagine with me. Imagine Yama oh. did anything during the first invasion when Rukia and was being rescued by Ichigo and friends. It just would have been fucking game over. Just instantly game over. Oh, 100%. Ichigo would have been incinerated. Like, that's why I'm just saying they, they kind of, you know, poke and prod it. Where it's like, oh, it takes a whole lot to get him off his perch. You know, yada, yada, so on and so forth. It's like, dude. I That's what, listen, you know what? I respect the Stern Raiders, all right? Even though they're basically fucking racist. Um, <laughs> the, their leader is out there doing stuff. Yuha, I guess that's what happens when you're on the back foot. You're not defending. But, or, sorry, his correct pronunciation is Yuha Baha. Baha. <laughs> <laughs> um he is out on the front lines, kicking ass and taking names. He's going out there doing his thing. Yeah, he throws his kind of members to the wolves just to get them killed. But at least he's out there kicking ass. Yama's not. Yama will wait till the last fucking moment. Is he actually or is he in there talking to Aizen? He would have been out there kicking ass and taking names except for Aizen fucked him. Okay? Oh, I do love that reveal at the yes. end. I was like, yes. He, he would have been doing something. Not like Yama, who he's sitting up there drinking fucking tea as his people are getting roasted. His people should be better. You could argue that. <laughs> yeah. I could see that point. Yep. Um, let's see. Oh, and then I thought this was interesting. This is the first episode that has an after credit scene. Oh, you're right. And it's uh, it's Kenpachi. It's Kenpachi you, you, right? show, yeah. you see that he lost and he's getting strangled. And then Yama shows up and officially refers to Yuha Baha by his name. So we officially know the name in this episode, I which he was never referred to. I thought it was kind of sweet that, you know, Yama grabs Kenpachi and still yeah. gently puts him down with one yeah, arm. I'm like, for God sure. damn, old man. And that's the first episode in a nutshell. Pike, these, anything that we didn't touch on in the first episode you want to talk about? Okay, we got a couple. So they cut a scene when Jidanbo was attacking. Uh, So, you, you know the, the scientist guy? He's got like the hair kind of put up. He had the brown hair. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Like he was the, the one that did the announcement. He's got like the little yeah. ponytail, right? He, he just stabbed the fat bald guy. Wait, what? Wait, what? Yeah, they cut that scene. It was because Pepe's there, and he, he's the the love. Oh, Raider, that's my what. God. I forgot about him. And so there's, there's just a, a scene where they're like, holy shit, Jidanbo, what are you doing? And then that guy gets stabbed. And then they don't come back to that ever again. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. So we get to the part where, oh, who could have saved them? And I just wrote, what kind of big penis Chad could have saved everybody? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll never really know. Yep. It's like not till season two. It's not like you can hear his voice crystal clear. This is not something I figured out. This was on the Internet. But apparently Kilgay's eyes look like that because they're the bars of a jail. Oh, I, I get That's that. Cool. I could see that. Yeah. That's I thought, really I cool. Thought it, he just got like weird bug eyes. Yeah, ditto. I was like, I was like, all right. <laughs> I thought for sure he's just say, yep, he got stronger. He's got bug eyes now. <laughs> okay, so the reason I laughed really hard when Jose was talking about that thing is because there's a joke they cut from the manga where Renji suggests, Captain, why don't you, why don't you let me use my bonkai and then observe it, and then 
and then when that happens, I will figure it out. And the Biaki just goes, you're not stupid enough to observe and figure it out. So I'll do it. Uh, makes sense. Makes sense. But uh, nah, that doesn't make sense. I disagree. That doesn't make sense <laughs> because Biakia, listen, this goes back to my classic fuck Shinji. Biakia is an all arounder. All right. He's going to, he's better at every single thing than Renji. Every single thing. So Biakia not giving away his Bankai will just as easily figure out and watch what is happening when Renji does it. There's no reason for Biakia to need to be first hand up in the front when he can watch Renji do it. He just wanted to call Renji stupid. What can I say? I think he was just trying to be a good leader and being like, Renji, you've gotten stronger. Take this as a learning moment. And then he was like, well, shit. He's <laughs> like, like, well, yeah. he's like, they stole it. Yeah, that's the whoopsies. I wrote, I don't like Asnod's voice. Oh, he, yeah, his English stuff, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of. Interesting, because well, I'm listening. JP, I, and they're not creepy enough. Yeah, neither one. I, I agree. I don't know. I, I'm doing the Japanese one, and I liked his voice. Because I, I was, I, at first, I thought he was going to be a character that's not going to speak. When he first showed up in the first four set episodes that we watched, he doesn't say a fucking word. And then I was like, all right, maybe he's just going to be kind of a creepy guy, sinister, doesn't say a fucking thing. And then he spoke, and I was like, all right, yeah. It's I, like, I think I take did me like out. his voice in Japanese. Yeah, it didn't take me out. Let's see. In the manga, Kenpachi just calls all the Quincy scrubs. I like that. <laughs> we love that. Yep. I wrote a uh, fuck Bankai. Kenpachi's just getting shit done on his own. Dude, not even Shikai. Well, yeah, which you can say, you know, in the filler arc in the anime with Muramasa. Um, isn't that exactly what, like, Byakuya fucking does? He's just like, yeah, he's like, fuck it. It's like, I guess I'll just fight without it then. And then in this one, everybody's like, oh, my God, my Bankai's gone. What am I going to do? They, like, fucking throw a fit. We just pretend that arc doesn't exist. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> well, I'm just saying that in terms of character development – they could have done better. Uh, so you see in the flashback to like a thousand years ago, you see Sasakibe using his Bankai. And to do that, he has a Shikai out, right? Yes. And his Shikai is already a saber. So I wrote, his Zanpak toe knew in its heart that he would be a Westabu even before he became one. <laughs> yep. True. True. I do like his Zanpak toe because yeah, it is the a saber. rapier. Yeah, it's cool. That's so nice. That sword didn't exist back then. I know, but it's so nice and elegant, too. Maybe he created it. Oh. He knew he was going to be all into that culture. It's like, I'm, he, uh, he's playing the long game. <laughs> you yeah. know how some Bankais give you like a, a change of clothes? What if he got like cowboy boots and stuff, too? He just goes full That's, Western. Or he just turns into a knight. Oh, my God. True. Yes. He would be so cool. Or they could have gone with some sort of a three musketeer setup. Yeah, like, I do like, like that. Like, they already have that setup in Beach Brave Souls. Little, like, poncho thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I just wrote Yamamoto is a hypocrite. He let his captain's coat get messed up. True. That is so yeah. true. So he gave, like, Kimpachi and Byakuya and Shunsui a talking to. And he just let his coat, like, get disintegrated. Well, if there's anything that I saw from this Yamamoto and Thousand Year Blood War is he was out to be as petty as possible. Yeah, he was. And yes, just he was. to be as much of an asshole as possible. It, he wasn't going for efficiency in this fight. He was going for full on, you guys came back for round two. I want to embarrass the fuck out of you. Yeah. Uh, we call that Sam mode. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I mean, listen, that's, that's what uh, he was yes, going for. And honestly, yes. that's why he lost. So <laughs> at least you admit it. Yeah. Yeah, I wrote it is very, very unlike Yamamoto to just glock somebody like that. True, true. Because he, you think about to the trespassers and stuff, he gave them a lot of chances. Yeah, he did. But like I was saying, Yama was out to be petty as fuck when he came off his perch this time. I think it it really just shows what Sasakibe's death did to him. That was that was his best friend. He, he doesn't just kill anybody. He didn't. He didn't, like, fail to kill the Trace Bestias. He went, you guys are pretty cool. I'll just let you off with some scorches. Mm -hmm. And he explicitly didn't go out to stop Ichigo and all of the uh, the Ryoka because, eh, it's fine. It doesn't really matter. Everything is cool. This is not cool, Yama. This is really pissed off, Yama. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I think these couple of episodes coming up that we're going to talk about were fucking amazing. They were yes, super good. Oh, my God. And last thing I wrote was the ending is still a banger. Nah, disagree. I, I can't, I'm never gonna, you're never gonna sway me. Disagree. The, I agree with you. The ending Pisces. is boring as fuck. I still hate the opening. I like the ending. I've gotten used to it. Nah, boo, 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 boo. All right, episode six. Now let me read you and read you quote for quote my opening uh, notes that I took for this. Ready? 
Someone jizz in Uryu's book. <laughs> I hope so. I yeah, really hope yeah. so. Fuck so, Uryu. Because we get the opening <laughs> scene of Uryu fucking under a bridge, which I assume might be under the bridge where we saw like Ichigo and Chad. I, oh, I'm just going to. Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to headcanon that. But I, I love how he's just like fidgeting with the pages. He's like, oh, what's this? Yeah. And then you, you, you hear that noise when pages are stuck together. Being pulled apart, I'm like, Ew. yeah, like who was the animal? Like, come <laughs> on, like his dad didn't go back through and be like, and yeah, it was a so picture strange. of old man Yama. To be fair though, and this is not about oh, me jizzing in a book before we go anywhere, okay? But I have the I had those fucking High School of the Dead hardcovers for years, and I never opened them, and I opened them to find out the pages are fucking shredded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like they got all fucked up in shipping, and I just put it on the shelf and never looked at it. Okay, so I want to make it the head cannon. Uh, since it was a picture of Yama, that Uryu's dad just has a massive crush on Yamamoto. <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was it his dad or his grandpa's book? Both. Both? This is going to get really illicit. It could either be one of two things. It could have either been a sign of disrespect that he jizzed onto the page with Yama, or it could have been a cum tribute. <laughs> Now, <laughs> I'm not going to go ahead and be the deciding vote here, but I'm just saying it's one of the two. Well, this is before they discovered you can put stuff in a jar. Oh, saying. God. Yeah, otherwise that's where Uri would have found the book. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this book covered in the jar? Oh, Lord. This episode's fucking illicit as fuck already. All right. Continuing on. Um, here's another note that I wrote also that I thought I would be very confused because as a person who, as I mentioned out of myself last time, I don't watch the openings or the endings after I've seen it the first time. Game over. But the after credit scene, had I not known that it was there, it does not start from the ending credit scene in this episode so you know like a lot of animes they'll do an after credit scene and then the next episode they will start with the after credit scene just in case someone didn't see the after credit scene this one just full-on goes you just you had to watch it uh Kenpachi's done already i would have been so confused and like yama's already there like the whole thing i'm like if i had not seen that after credit scene, I'm like fuck did i miss something like what the fuck that's your fault you should watch the ending it's a banger no boo um and then i can't remember his name so i put Guy Shusue is uh, fighting Kiraku. The guy Kiraku's oh, fighting. Oh, the dude with the glasses? Don't know what the fuck his name is. Robert Akutron. Okay, there you go. Robert yeah. Akutron. He says, good indeed, in English. And it, he's having a whole conversation in Japanese, and he goes, good indeed, in English. I'm like, hmm, okay. It's like, sure. Take some English. A little bit, a bit of Japanish in there, uh, if you want. And then we go back to the Yama fight, where we get the three Stern Ritters. And I don't know who the third one is, so maybe one of you guys can clear it up. But... Three Stern Raiders try to jump Yama. One is Asnot, one is Baz B, and I don't know who the fuck the other one is. Na 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 My Chemical Romance. Oh, see, boy. Which you could also say that this might be another act of Yama being merciful because he does not kill any of them. Not a single one. Yeah, he does not. So I, I guess, yo, Yama decided to be nice to those three for whatever reason, but he could have easily incinerated them all. I thought he did kill them, though. No, because one of them was Baz B. Oh, you're right. Yeah, uh, his fo his his focus was all on you, huh? Who gives a fuck about those three? Get out the way. True, true. And then I wrote here, Unahana is sitting her bum ass inside, which they explain later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're, you were very offended at first. Redact like, that fuck in later you. scenes. But I saw they show her sitting inside, looking at a window. I'm like, the fuck is she doing? Like she's just sitting like, there doing. We know what you're capable of. Yes, like get your ass out there. And she's like, Nah, I'm just gonna hang outside. It's like, pretend right. you don't. Yeah, I mean, listen, if I pretend I don't, I would still be, like, a bit weird that she's not out there doing anything. But also, in previous, both the uh, Hawakamundo invasion and the original rescue arc, I don't think she did anything either. She just, she came, just showed up at the came end. in at the end. So I guess that's status quo for her. She's the white mage. The white mage never does shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Uh, let's see. So we do see Unahana comment on the fight that she wants Yama to end this as quickly as possible before he destroys all of soul society, like Yama himself, because he's so powerful. She knows that destructive force. Yes. And Yama goes Bankai instantly. No fucking around with He flames, goes Ichigo? No doing nothing. He goes Bankai, Zanka no Tachi, boom, instantly. I was like, damn. But that animation for all of that? Yeah. Woo. Yeah. The only one I had a problem with the animation on, and I think it looked... Uh, I didn't love was when he obviously reanimates the skeletons. It just came off like a bad anime. Like there's a lot of anime out there where all the monsters are CG for whatever reason. And they all have horrible animation. I just, I didn't mind it, but I did find it to be very stiff, but it makes sense because they're corpse. Yeah. It just harkened back to like, yeah, we couldn't afford the animation on this one. So here's a bunch of sh shitty little CG skeletons coming at him. They like, wasted it all on Yama fighting him. 
Dude, some of the cut scenes or some of the cuts in the fight were fucking incredible. Yep. They were so good. So his first one that he does, Zanka no Tachi, um, which is, I believe, East. East. He takes all of his flames and put it in his sword. And, but he stores them. He changed it since the last thousand years. Now he stores it just into the tip of the sword. Back in the old thousand-year-old Yamamoto, if he touched something, it would light it on fire. You touch it with anything with sword, it lights it on fire. This one, they said it just merely blows everything away it touches by force. Yeah, it's all disintegrated by the mm-hmm. heat. So it's not even like it lights it on fire. It just fucking blows it away. And that's why everything he touched just kept fucking leaving craters everywhere. Yep. I was like, whoa, what a fucking badass. Yeah, everyone, I mean, that's why I'm saying every one of Yama's four phases could have taken down fucking anybody. Oh, like, 100%. Crazy. Which, I mean, like, I know this is a writer's thing, and obviously they get stronger and stronger. But you also imagine, like, I don't know, if he just sheathed himself in fire against Aizen, how was he, how was Aizen ever going to touch him? This is true. Yeah, this is true. So, like, there's, I, and I was like, I try to give him a little bit of leeway because, you know, like, obviously, as a writer, you can have some stuff plotted out, but you can't have it all plotted out. So, it's like, I'm sure for the fight of Aizen, like, hey, Yama's got to lose somehow, but you know, he's gone Bankai. He's head captain. You know, he's got one. Why is he not using it? And that's why with Shinji, they kind of wrote his Bankai in a way where it's like, this is why Shinji didn't use it. But with Yama, there's no reason. Why did he not use it? It was already a fake Karakara town that they were fighting over in the Eisen arc. I feel like he might have accidentally killed some of his own men doing that. It's an AOE. Well, because, I mean, when he goes west like, and everything gets, like, uh, sucked up dry, I'm like, shit, that, 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 that on its own is a lot of fucking pressure to put in a specific area. And it was... Like, Uno and, and Isane were, like, way far away, and, like, all the water in the vase just evaporated. Yeah, so but, may- I mean, like, how long... Well, how long would you need? How long would you realistically need? He could pop it for a second. Well, I mean, Yuha just let him power up. Maybe Aizen wouldn't have done that. True. Yeah, I agree true. with that. But it's like also about the people being in the the AOE area. And I know he's super strong, but Yugrim was there and he was just vibing. He was just spectating the whole fight. Isn't Yugrim like actually super strong though? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, why yeah. I'm saying yeah. that. Where it's like, obviously, I know he's not fodder, so we can't compare it just like people laying on the fucking ground. But like Ugrim was chilling. Uh, maybe it maybe it had to do with what we were talking about earlier. Eisen want not Eisen. Yama wanted to end the fight pretty quick, but he's not ready to just full on murder Eisen. He just wants Eisen out the way. Yeah, he put him in jail. Yeah, I think we'll we'll just we'll cut it to that, and then let's see what else here. Uh, so I have the effect of Wes, which is I'll try to pronounce these. I don't want to be yelled at when they get mispronounced, but it's like Zanjitsu Gokui, which is it turns fifteen million degrees Celsius. And the body and blade become encapsulated by basically the sun is how they refer to it. Yep. Which is, that's what I'm saying. I mean, if he did that's that. That's such a badass if, thing, if though. If he did that. And it's like they show the animation of walking on the ground and the concrete, like, melting. Melting underneath, underneath it. it. It's like when Bakugo uses it. Yeah, his, uh, that's explosions. what I was thinking. Yeah. I was like, that's some it's good like animation my hero. right there. Yeah. Which, you know, heaven forbid we compare Bleach to my hero, but it's still. Exactly. I think I watched the thing on, uh, like, Twitter where someone power scaled the tiles in the Soul Society because they were like, yeah, the sca- the. The tiles on the roofs don't melt, so they must be stronger than Yamamoto. Oh, true. Ah. But also, it's like, you know, if you have the power of the sun and the concrete is melting that slow, it's like, that's some pretty good concrete right there. That's so concrete. It's made out of <laughs> ratio. Let's see. And then I wrote down a little bit of a time frame here. We learned that a thousand years ago is the first time the leaked rain, the light rain, invaded Soul Society. But it wasn't a two. It was 200 years ago where they finally decided to get rid of all the Quincy's. So there was still a 800-year 800 800 gap, year gap where the yeah. Quincy were still just chilling after rebelling against the Soul Society. Yeah, well, from what I what I could gather it was he killed Yuha, who's the head, and he goes, yeah, we're done. Quincy's go away. Do your own thing. And then it was when the, the scale started to be imbalanced, they were like, all right, we got to solve a problem. Extermination Act. Yeah. Hey, I, you know, it's like when you leave a little bit of, uh, you know, those animals chewing up your garden. You know, it gets to a point where it's like, I right, got to take them out. It's like well, they were nice and cute at the first point. Now they're done. He gave him a chance. He gave him lots of chances. True. True. And then I ha- wrote down also you are finally shoots an arrow after getting his sword broken. And then we get a flashback of Yuha Baha having done the same thing a thousand years ago, standing on a pile of dead stern raiders. We see this image a lot throughout the fight. Mm-hmm. But. In this image, and they show it later, which I didn't know they were going to. But in this image, I saw for a second that somebody was standing behind Yuha Baha, and it was Sasuke Bay on top yeah. of the Yeah, he like pushes over a dead body and just stabs him. Yeah, so that's the reveal later. But in this quick flashback, Sasu, it's almost Sasuke Bay is standing on the top of the mountain behind Yuha Baha. 
Yuhabaha is on the middle of the mountain of bodies, and then Yama is on the bottom, and they have basically have him cornered, which you find out that is not the story, as Jose said. That's a total spoiler. Different, sorry, total different version of how that one went down, but it was in the quick flashback for whatever reason. Then we get, let's see, we learn of a new move that Yuhabaha does. Um, I'm gonna give him my best shot here. <laughs> Kirk and lead Sankt Swinger. Which is the ultimate defense incantation, but it combines offense and defense. It's supposed to be super OP. You can't come close. Yeah, I'm sure it will work really well in this fight and not be broken immediately. <laughs> yeah, it's our ultimate defense move. Shattered instantly. And then that's when we learn of the south version of Zanka no Tachi. Uh, I'm going to give it a shot again. Kaka Jumano Kushi. I give up on that one. I don't want to say the rest of it. Um, but he awakens those he is slain in battle with his flames, and they chase down whatever he deems an enemy until they turn into ash. Which uh, I, I, baller move? I, I, dude. Okay, so I remember reading that and be like, oh my god, if they ever animate this, fuck yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I call this the heavy metal album cover move. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. And I like like Yuha at first is just like. Not not a big of a deal. You think this is gonna stop me? And then he makes eye contact with one of the scouts. He's like, "Fuck, these are all Quincy's." <laughs> yep. And it's, it's like, "Yeah, all right." And then Yama's like, "Oh, I guess you have a little bit of compassion still, huh?" And it's like, "That's what I'm saying." Yama didn't need to go this hard. I feel like there was multiple times where he could have just gone in for the roast. You know, he really could have, but he decided like, "Nah, like I'm really gonna fucking ground this guy into the dirt." He's that mad. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that is what it is. He just wanted it straight up, like, don't ever fucking try this again. And then, uh, obviously, we get him stepping through all of the old skeletons, trying to get to Yama. And Yama's basically making fun of him the whole way. He's like, wow, how does it feel to have to walk on all your old allies to get to me? Isn't Yama still engulfed in flames at this point? Yep. Yeah. Still on right. fire. Yeah. And then uh, we find out that Yama, well, we, we assume, Yama says that he didn't steal his Bankai because he couldn't. Yama thinks because Stern Ranger steal Bankai by learning its power and understanding it, Yama hasn't shown his true powers even a thousand years ago when they first fought the, the first time. So over that made, thousand years, he just perfected it? They just didn't need it. Yeah, I think I think Pythi's right. Yeah, he, I just don't think an opportunity ever came up where he needed it. And then they also talk about later when Yama's already dead and Yuha's just talking to his fucking dead body that Yuha thinks he's grown weak. because Which it happens all the time. This is an old samurai story trope. The war is over. They become peaceful. They choose to invest in things like studying, passing on their knowledge to the younger Poetry. people. So they're not a honed warrior anymore. You know, Yama is still the honed of the honed warriors, but he's not what he could have been if he had stayed like a full on savage. Yeah, he wasn't as ruthless. Yeah, if he had uh, for a thousand years been a fucking savage, like he would have been crazy. So society would have been dust, let's be honest. Yeah. 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 He would have, it would have been, it would have been more, I think, similar to like a Genghis Khan. Where they just fucking go around fucking shit up. At what point would they run out of shit to fuck up? Yeah. It might not even have lasted a thousand years. So that's a great question. They would have turned on each other at some point. Oh, true. It's very, it's very Alexander the Great. True. Yeah. True. Uh, let's see. What else do we get? Um, so I got, then we get Zonka no Tachi North, Tenchi Kaijin, and he immediately cuts Yama or Yuha Baha almost in half he's still connected by a little piece but basically blast him that was a savage ass attack too so what is i guess my question is i don't know if they explain i didn't write notes on it this could be a question for you pythes what is north what do you mean like i guess what is the ability of north did we see north already uh they didn't ever explained it he just cut him real good (laughs) he's like yeah this is north this is the one where i slice you in half this is where you die Mm mm-hmm all of the other, all the other abilities are. It's the defense with the fire. It's the the heat. It's the distress. I'm guessing this one's just the. This one hurts a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like so. North is where I'm about to slice you through the stomach. It's gonna be very painful. You're gonna lose your arm. Yeah, you're gonna be okay. It, it's gonna be lovely, and I'll give you a speech mm-hmm. afterwards. So, um, which we don't get that often because Yama walks away, starts to rain. Yama walks away, which I thought was very um, majestic, very very lovely, but then. The Yuha Baha on the ground begins apologizing. And Yama's like, who the fuck is the boss apologizing uh, yeah, to? I, I, was, I was like, hello? Yeah. And then we see the squad one barracks blow up. And that's where we find out that is not the Yuha Baha, the main one. It's Stern Ritter Y, the yourself. And I thought this, you know, obviously white guy calling another culture racist. But the R of Royd 
Lloyd, which they he Yuha Ba says Royd Royd. The so there's two surrender wise. One is Lloyd Lloyd, the other is Royd Royd. And a Royd Lloyd. I'm getting all myself all fucked up now. But Stern Ritter Y, the one that was Yuha Baha, was Stern Ritter Y the yourself, the R of Royd Lloyd. Which, you know, yeah. they pronounce the L's as R's anyway, so they're the same name. It must have been so confusing for the Japanese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were probably like, fuck, that is confusing. It was like to everyone else, like, yeah, okay, all right, yeah, that makes sense. There's two, I guess. There's the, the, the L and the R sound. And then Yama basically is very surprised that he was fucking around the squad one barracks. He thinks of a gentleman that I didn't recognize, one of his other squad members, I assume. And he's like, oh, my God, this guy died. But then Yuha's like, well, what do you think was under the squad one barracks? Yeah, it's all smirkly. Yeah. He's like, hey, 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 gotcha. And that's when we see the GOAT, the Aizen, for the first time ever, which I wrote down all caps that Aizen knew he was, yep. which I yeah. thought was fucking baller. It's like, yeah. That's a well-studied dude. That is a well-studied dude. Oh, it's Aizen. He knows all. Well, he knows what the Soul King is. Of course he knows who Yuha is. Yeah. Aizen was just the fucking best. And it's like it just the whole conversation. I rewatched a couple times. So I want to make sure I had all the notes. I feel like mm-hmm. there was a lot of subtleties in what Aizen was saying, which having known how it turns out with him, like kind of fucking with Yuha's senses, um, I thought it was very clever. So first Aizen refuses to join. And he's like, yeah, I'm not going to join you. And he's like, I really can't stand to see a Quincy following in the steps of a Soul Reaper, which was him. Yo. He's like, yeah, you're just kind of following my path. It's kind of lame, honestly. And I was like, Jesus, Aizen. <laughs> and then Aizen, Yoha Baha goes to leave. And I was like, oh, well, like, that's it? And I, you know, I was like, it would take too long to kill you. And honestly, it would take even longer to restrain you because you fuse with the Hogyoku. It would be, it would take Yeah, he too straight much up just time. tells him. He's like, you're too strong right now. Mm-hmm. And then Aizen is like, yeah, it's best to minimize the time we spend sharing the same path, especially when dealing with someone who should eventually be eliminated. So I took that as like, you know, it's like, yeah, we shouldn't mess around too long down here, especially when, you know, you or I is eventually going to be killed. And he's like, and even Yuha just like let out like a little smirk, like, yep. <laughs> yeah. like, you're, you're right about this. Yep. He's like, I'm leaving. Fuck you. Yeah, I fucking love it. And like, even the little thing about like, yeah, you shouldn't spend too much time down here. But meanwhile, he's fucking with his senses the whole time. Yep. So how does he actually do that, though? Well, he basically, to my knowledge, and Pythes, hone in or uh, chime in if this is wrong. He became one with his sword. He basically threw away the Zanpakuto. So I don't think Aizen needs it anymore. He could just full on do it so without. So he's Kyokatsuigetsu, right? To my name, that fuse with Hogyoku, you know, he's he's the the thing. He's the, the shit. He's, he's the guy. So, from my knowledge, they never really talk about how it works, but his sword was fused to his hand, so I'm imagining he does have some Kyokusu Agetsu left over. Yeah, because that would make sense, because otherwise, if we're still going by the rules of Kyokusu Getsu, um, he would have had to have shown it to Yuha Baha for it to work on him at all, correct? Yeah, and when the hell would that have ever happened? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I'm assuming... He is probably one with the sword at this point, and he can just kind of fuck around whenever. Just at this point. gazing upon his eyes is just yeah. like, up, oh, got you. It's like Sukuyomi. Yeah. He's just doing Loki from Marvel. He's just creating doubles all the time. Yeah, I, yeah. that's how I that's how I envision it now. He's basically Loki from Marvel, where he's like, he can just do whatever the fuck he wants. He's the trickster it. guy. Also, that entire conversation, that scene was like two minutes. That was the best two minute conversation. Yes. Happening. Yeah, that was. it was so good. That's why I was like, I watched it multiple times, just kind of like trying to write down the notes on it and stuff. And I was like, Aizen's just the coolest, dude. He's just the coolest. Why do you think they brought him back for the finale? <laughs> yeah. Here's what I would do if I was writing a manga and it's like I had a couple of villains that had been previously defeated, kind of like Dragon Ball Z style. I would show them a couple of times, like maybe walking around or maybe they have a chat and then I would see which one gets the most fan reaction, you know, where they're like, oh my God, Aizen's back. And then I would know who to bring back at the very end. Yup, that'd be so sick. I mean, I like the way it is now, because you have the bad guy, and then what's cooler than the hero teaming up with the other bad guy? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, true. it's true, it's true. And then let's see, we go back to the fight with Yama, where he is um, no bankai, no nothing, and Yuha Baha says that it's not that they couldn't steal his bankai; it's just only he was strong enough to steal it, because then. Yama tries to go Bankai again, immediately gets it stolen, which I thought, by the way, was dog shit. Because why Yama knows, well, okay, I'm going to argue with myself here. Yama knows that you could steal Bankais, right? That's yeah. a full well knowledge. You would assume the main guy, especially after you were just fighting a fucking dupe, 
you would assume that Yuha Baha can potentially maybe seal, it was at least seal away your Bankai, no tea. Um, he immediately does it again. But Yama was full on under the impression that, oh, you guys just can't steal it. So, because I saw it originally and I was like, man, if I was Yama, I wouldn't use it. I'd be like, nah, fuck that. Like, I know, I know he's going to steal it. But then I guess he was under the impression that he's too strong for it and he got fucked. Yeah, because uh, Yama still thought he was super powerful at the moment. I'd also say, like, Yama's been through all this shit. He clearly wasn't thinking straight. Yeah, I agree with that one. It's just an he impulse. Went through, he went through, like, a whole season of anime's worth of, like, budget in an episode. <laughs> yeah. And then, oh, fuck it, the wrong guy. And he's here now. She gotta solve this problem again. And then immediately gets his shit stolen. Well, yeah, and it could have also been a potential kind of like a Hail Mary where he had to use all of that stuff to defeat the duplicate guy where he's like, fuck, the real one's here now. I have to use Bonkai or else it's fucked. Yep. Which, hey, now the other captains don't seem that stupid. True. So then we get Yuha send, sending a uh, – he shoots a bow and arrow from the sky that shoots down a cool blue sword. I thought that him. was pretty badass. I was like, Yeah, Boom. it was a w- way cool fucking inches for summoning a sword. And then – I wrote down, Yama just stands there as he gets cut in half. He just knows. He knows what's coming. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, well, He just well, accepted fuck. it. He was like, yeah, uh, I can't do anything here. It's like, R.I.P. He's like, well, I tried. Yep. And that's the end of episode six. So anything that we missed in there, Pythes? All right, let's see. Uh, I just wrote, oh, yeah, that Uryu shit still only in the anime. Oh, interesting. Oh, wow. That is because I, I feel like – I feel like they didn't need the additional Uryu scenes in this because it's not making sense. The Stern Ritters refer to Uryu like a Quilge. He was like, oh, like Uryu is weaker than you. Like that can't be right. So kind of like alluding to they've had contact with Uryu already and they already have him as part of the Stern Ritters, right? But then they keep cutting to him and, and Uryu is just now figuring it out. He's like, hmm, what, what's all this stuff that happens? Like, don't you know? Well, so he doesn't know about the shit that happened a thousand years ago. They only told him about the genocide 200 years ago. And it's more like the Quincy's have been observing him, but they've not talked to him yet. So never direct contact. Not No direct contact until the end of the season, I think. Hmm, okay, interesting. And then I wrote, I wrote, why are they showing these scenes now? Like they're interrupting the Yama fight for this. And yeah. then they never cut back. Can't can't they do that like next episode? <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's very true. And when all the ba- when the fighting happens, I just wrote, "Hey, look, I found the budget." <laughs> yeah, Here. dude. Some of the scenes in the in the fight with Yama and Yuha were crazy. They were fucking nice. It was pristine. I wrote the shot where it spins around both of the characters was expensive as fuck and really hard to do, especially in two. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. That's crazy. That's why it's like you could tell almost there were certain scenes where the animation became so fucking cracked. And it was like, damn. It's like, you know they brought in some sort of like outside fucking pro animator. Like, do just these three seconds right here. And like, gotcha. He's like, I got you. Give, me a, month. Out of the Give me a month. Mm-hmm. So, so when uh, Yama first uses his Bankai, there's just this constant low rumble in the background that's so cool. Yeah, that was cool. There's a lot of cool. The sound design on it also was also really fucking good. Like even the flame sound effects and like they were so loud at some point, but you could still hear them talking, which was lovely. But it was really well done. But I love that little crackling effect that you get in there. And like, uh, I mean, everyone who's been near a fire would understand that. Yeah. Or like a bonfire. You definitely hear that crackling in there. All right. So now we have some more uh, Quincy translations due to the manga. Uh, Kirchen Lied is church song. Okay. And Sanct Zwinger is Sanctuary Praise. Hmm. Okay. And then I wrote end of volume 57, and I don't have any of the manga until we get to 61, which is about when they get to everything but the rain. So my manga comparison's in here. Okay. All right. So the rest of it's pretty faithful then. I wrote, uh, Eisen could not be paid to care about Yuha and his stupid mustache. <laughs> yup. Yeah. Yep. Uh, think about think about how uh, Aizen did, how Aizen uh, stopped Yuha. Aizen secretly just saved the whole Soul Society. True. true. This is very he true. definitely saved Ichigo, which indirectly that, saved the Soul Society. That conversation that we love, that took like, what, a minute and a half? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he kept him there for hours. 
So what if that conversation happened in real time and then the real Yuha came out and just started wrecking shit? Yeah, you think about it, really? If Yuha didn't get affected by Aizen and didn't have his minutes turned to hours, imagine he had what? Let's just say, let's give him like two hours. If Yuha Baha had two extra hours after his fight with Ichigo, it would have been just fucking game over, especially for all the Stern Raiders. They, I think they would have cleaned, they cleaned the field. Yeah, they cleaned house. Mm-hmm. Easy. Completely destroyed, and that's not what Aizen wants. He wants to rule over Soul Society. He wants to rule over everything. So he's like, all right, got to do my part. True. And they we're do just, talk about later what Aizen's intentions were according to Squad Zero, which I thought was very, very interesting. And I believe, let me check, I believe that's the end of my notes for Volume 6. Yep, that's it. Now on to, now on to Episode 7. All right, let's get it. So uh, this Episode 7 was very exciting for me because I get immediately flashback. We see the original Gote 13. Yeah, they look badass as fuck. Was amazing. And obviously, if you were on the internet during the time that episode dropped, there was no way you didn't see them because they were fucking everywhere. Just, yeah, plastered all over the place on Twitter. And they also show Unohanu, Unohanu, Unohana. Uh, they show her, like, full on before we get any sort of reveal or anything like that. Yeah, and it's it's, like, it's not happy-go-lucky one. It's just, like, she's got that, like, looking down on you face, like, yeah. fuck you, human. That's Kimpachi Unohana. Yeah. Yeah. Which I would argue, had you not known the reveal, I don't think you would have put together that that was her. I kind of agree because I'm, I'm so used to seeing her with the braids and everything. It's just the lady with black hair. Yeah. You wouldn't tell. Yeah. Yeah. And then my next note is that was amazing because <laughs> that was fucking cool. And then I also, luckily, I was in the middle of typing up some notes at the end of this episode. I'm going to immediately jump. And the ending is also all of the original Gote 13. Yeah. Episode. They changed the ending for this one. And you see all of the originals. Mm-hmm. The second time they've changed the ending for some stuff. It was the first time. And then we got a couple episodes of it playing regular. And then this time. Yep. It's cool. And then this is where I wrote. Sasaki be hiding under the corpses stabs Yuha. So I yeah. thought that was fucking cool. I, I, I did not expect that. I don't even remember that happening. I forgot it happening too. Yeah, that was a, it was amazing. I think the only thing I knew about that is I might have heard that from you previously, Pythes, of us talking, that that is how it went down when we were talking about Sasaki because I love the boy. I love Sasaki Um yeah. But fucking gangster, dude. So, and it, I feel like I'm going to headcanon again. Everybody loves headcanon stuff. I so feel far. like the reason Yama was able to beat Yuha Baha so easily last time was directly only because Sasuke stabbed him and caught him off guard. I mean, how are you going to fight back when you just get stabbed in the back? Yeah, and I don't yeah. think Yuha Baha was ready. Like, yeah, I think, the element of surprise was literally there. Yeah, and he and, got stabbed almost through the heart. Yeah, and he was so focused on like Yama running at him. Imagine all of a sudden you get stabbed in the back, and then now you're all fucked up. You're all like focused, all fucked up. This combobulated. Slash him. So Sasuke Bay canonically saved Soul Society. I want that written down. Yep, yep. yep. He's the ride or die. <laughs> he, he deserves his moment, okay? It might have been a thousand years ago, but he deserves it. Let's see. A yeah. couple of bullet points here that I wrote as well. Yama, full on cut in half. Game over for Yama. Big rip. Uh, Shunsui gets shot three times and is still okay. Yeah, yeah he gets glacked. And then let's see. Uh, Yuha Baha tries to walk away, and I love this part. Yama's fucking severed ass top half was still holding on to Yuha Baha's cape. Yep. Fuck him. Yeah, it was just fucking amazing. And then I really liked, I'm normally not one for like people doing their fucking grandiose speech to a dead body, but Yuha Baha, I loved how he was just kind of like pondering. And just like, he was just so offended by Yama. Just yes, like, he's so like, weak. even in death. Yeah. And you he's like, he me. goes on to was like, why? He's like, you want to know why I think you're so weak and you weren't one of the special threats? Like, why didn't you heal your arm? Why didn't you fucking do anything about it? It's like, you could have easily had Orihime bring it back. Yep, he straight up says you could have had the human girl, but yeah. you didn't want to exploit her. And then he's like, even when you're fighting against Aizen, you were not sure if you wanted Ichigo there. He's like, it's just so weak. He's like, if you were old Yama, you would have used everything at your disposal to get shit done. You would have thrown your people at the enemy to get it done. We'll come back to that, I promise. <laughs> and that's what we're talking about originally, like back then, where it's like, Yama is not the same. Like when we're talking about him studying the books and stuff like that now, that's what Yuha Baha is saying. Where it's like, yeah, he's like, you you ended up being compassionate is what happened. Yep. And he says that the original Gote 13, they were savage killers and they were literally guards only in name. They were all creepy. The yeah. dude with the gold teeth. Yeah. Dude, one of them has a bone sword. I wrote yeah, it in my notes. Yeah. You see in the ending, one of them, the creepy looking guy, has a fucking bone sword. What about those that guy that's very clearly Byakuya's ancestor? Which one's that? And the one, uh, the one with the straw hat. 
Oh, the guy like he's uh, off to the side. Oh, like uh, I don't know how to explain and then it. That, that guy that's very clearly um, uh, Yuroichi's ancestor. Okay, that one. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, I yeah, got yeah, that one, yeah, dude. right away. That's that's easy peasy. The Biakio one, news to me. Back to the Yuha Baha fight, of course. Um, he just straight up obliterates Yama's body. He just like kicks him off of his cape and just destroys everything. I thought that was actually kind of cool, especially he's just like you piece of filth, and then just yeah obliterates him yeah um let's see and then i have a good note right here that i want you guys to all know um i'm just gonna read it as i typed it from watching it lots of reaction shots of shinji for him doing jack shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh the he boy just, this episode and the one after it he's in a lot not a single scratch on him not a single scar on him no his his cloak is not even ruffled Sakanada, he's putting in the work. <laughs> he was just kind of like, people were come at him, and he was just kind of telling them, go the other way. <laughs> and they're like, oh, I can't control my body, and he would just run away. I would love to see that from the outside. Yeah. Like, you run at Shinji, and then they immediately turn around. <laughs> it's like, like, hello? Yeah. Why am I running this way? My bad, my bad. And then I didn't know, because following that, this lovely reaction shot of Shinji, I didn't know if this is an actual Stern Raider or if they're just random foot guards. But is it a Stern Ritter that summons all of the mass foot guards? Like, is that an ability, or are those just their generic people that they threw in there? That those are just dudes that are helping to invade. Okay. Oh, okay, so they're just the foot soldiers. They're, I think they're the Vardenreich, because the, the Stern Ritters are all the people with the shrifts, the, yeah, the powers. Yeah. Those are just the foot soldiers. They're the, they're the no name losers who okay. cares about them. Yeah, they referred to them by a name, and that's why I was like, is that one guy like duplicating himself? Like, they're gonna steal another thing from Waikamundo's book? But I didn't think so. Well, they stole the uniform for Wakemundo. Why not go farther? Yeah, that's yeah, for fucking true. sure. Um, then after that, we see Baz B is still alive. And then I loved this part right here. So we get Ichigo breaking out of the jail. That officially happens. But when he breaks out of it and makes it to the Soul Society, it's a first-person point of view. Like where he sees Akon. Yep. Akon has three arrows in his back. And then he just fucking one shots i wrote his name on shaz domino just immediately yeah. roasts him. i love how he walks in he's like hi i'm shaz domino <laughs> <laughs> yeah just blown up and it was all done in first person i was like that was incredible i would love to see like a first person episode they tried that with that movie what was that movie that came out where it was uh, all first person like Hen henry something yeah i want to say henry danger but i think i'm thinking of a nickelodeon <laughs> that sounds about right i don't know uh but yeah I know they did it for all first person for that dude the ichigo scene where it's first person he just fucked that guy up it was that Blew me away. Put you in his headspace. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. And then the first person Ichigo seeks out after he saves Akon, drops him off, and then he immediately goes to Byakuya. And I'm like, oh, he knows, dude. He knows. He's like, who's going to give it to me straight and quick? Byakuya. Well, I think he sensed Renji and Rukia were still alive, and he's like, well, Byakuya is dying over here, so I got to go pay my respects to the boy. Yeah. And then I did like also like before Byakuya says shit, he's like, Rukia and Renji, are they okay? And I'm like, yeah. Oh. First thing like, he says Byakuya is like, is such okay? a good guy. And it's like every word that came out of Byakuya's mouth this episode just further points to the point that he should have died. I completely yeah. agree. Should have gone. He needed to go. Like but. everything that came out of his mouth was a death sentence sentence. I think at one point he straight up says, I think this is the end for me. No, yeah. I, I don't th even think he says he thinks is the end. I think Byakuya calls his own death. He's like, this is, this is it. Like, like please. A um, couple of things that he says. Oh, yeah. Here, I, I wrote down a couple of things. Um, I did quote final favor is what he asked of Ichigo, which he's, you know, yeah. is final fucking favor, which is when we get the please protect the soul society Kurosaki Ichigo. And I was like, oh, oh I love that bit. I was just like, oh. let's go. And then he yeah. even tells Ichigo when he's asking about Ruki and Renji that he doesn't have much time left. Yep. He straight mm -hmm. up does. But I do love that bit, too, when it cuts back to Byakuya and he's like, he didn't even give me an answer. But just that's went. just that's the kind of guy he is. Yeah. And I was yeah. just like, my and he's God. like, that's all I needed. That's all I needed. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I love the relationship so much. And once again, I think it would have been way more impactful. I know we had Yamamoto die, which is pretty, pretty crazy. But I don't think we had an attachment to Yamamoto or Sasakibe. Whereas I think if we had someone like Byakuya die, people would have gone ape shit. Oh, 100 percent. I think it would have just elevated the stakes a lot more. Mm -hmm. We think that Yama and Sasakibe are cool, but we don't care about. We haven't gone through a big arcs with them. Yeah, there's no They're emotional attachment. Biakia, that that's different, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like Biakia, like you think, because like everybody thinks, and you know whether you want to believe it or not, that iconic first fight with Ichigo and Biakia is like 
the iconic fight from Bleach. It really is. So you see like that progression basically with Byakuya and uh, Ichigo, where it's like, those are your boys, you know? It's like they become this mutual respect where it's like you just love. Like everybody they, fucking loves they it. They almost have like a brotherly like aspect to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Almost like Byakuya's older brother, Ichigo's younger brother. And it's like, you're me like, I love it. Instantly love it. And Byakuya has kind of always been the guy. And actually, as not points to it, where it's like, You've never had to feel fear because you're just like that guy. You like you normally go into these fights and you just overpower them. Like yep. just fucking over. Where it's like we know that and we love Byakuya. That's why it would have meant something if he got fucking murdered. Yeah, I was I would have I would have cried. You can, you can even think back to one of the few good things that the Fullbring arc brought was when Tsukushima stabs uh, Byakuya and Byakuya doesn't fall for it. He goes, "Why it should work." Ichigo doesn't trust you, and that's good enough for me. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. Where that's what I'm saying. I think he was set up as the perfect fall guy. Like you couldn't have written a better outing for a character than what Byakuya had right there. And I don't know what ended up happening behind the scenes, why he didn't want to be killed or whatever. But I just feel like all signs were pointing to him dying, and then he just so quickly changed his mind. So from what I've been told, uh, people complained about it too hard, and Kubo, Kubo got sent death threats. Jeez. That's, That's also sweet. here's another point. I really think it would have made Rukia's fight later with Asnot mean so much more. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yep. If she was like out for fucking revenge and she stayed kind of fucking icy cool, you know? And yeah. Like, Something she learned from her brother who's yes. always cool, calm, yes. and collected. Yes. Would have been beast. She wins that fight and then Biaki's like, hold on, let me get a hit in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he took it to the school of Kisuke Urahara. Is yes, what I'm he hearing. did. Yep. Now, I will say. They do this final like three piece combo with Byakuya, uh, Hitsugai, and Kenpachi beating the shit out of Gerard Valkyrie later. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. That's gonna be hype animated, so I'm okay with him surviving exclusively for that. Yeah. Um, the only thing I know, because obviously I bitched about, I I am a proud Byakuya should have died here, Stan. Okay. Yeah. So the only valid point I've heard about it, and this is from Django, which you know. By these, we all we, we we all love Django. He's a community member in the Discord. Lovely guy. Um, one of the boys. Yeah, one of the boys through and through. He said that Byakuya still needs to stay alive so Renji can pass him because that was an OG Soul Society thing where Renji obsessed, obsessed, obsessed over how he needs to get more powerful than Byakuya. That's his goal to be, become more powerful than Byakuya so that he could finally take care of Rukia. You know, like that's what he wants to do. Renji's not. That's a that's a really, really good point. Yes. Yeah. So that's that, the that only defense for that that I've heard where I'm like, fair fucking play, man. Fair play. Because that could be definitely set up in the hell art too. They could definitely redeem that at some sort of a point where maybe Byaki's not able to do it and Renji steps in. Where he's finally, maybe Byaki has a proud father moment where he's like, okay, like Renji, like I can die now because Renji is stronger. Like he can protect Rukia. As much as we shit on Renji and rightfully so. His fight with Byaki in Soul Society is one of the best fights in the series, just because of what it means. Yeah. Especially when he hits him with the, oh, I finally got my own Bankai. Yeah, it's, it's an emotional, emotionally heavy fight. He manages to force Byakuya to a knee. He's like, ah, your fangs did reach me. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic. Which just starts, I think that starts the kind of respect for Byakuya from the fan point of view. And that starts Byakuya to kind of think outside the box that, oh, this low-rank, no-name guy can achieve Bankai and force me to a knee, and then Ichigo has his whole thing, and Byakuya changes his mind. Yep. yep. Good, on, good on you, Django. He's a big brain. Yeah, he is. He is. He's legitimately, like, he's got some good thoughts. Um, okay. So, I wrote this down, and I love, so, obviously, Ichigo straight, goes straight to fucking Yuha Baha. And they have this great back and forth where Ichigo's like, are you the enemy leader? And then Yohaba's like, oh, enemy, huh? He's like, I am, but you could say I'm not. Because, like, you know, he thinks they're kind of they could be on the same team, yeah. you know. And then Ichigo's like, stop fucking around. Are you the one who destroyed Soul Society? He was like, yeah, I am. And then he immediately starts stacking him. It was so good. He powers up, too, which is crazy. Yes. And, like, I just love that, like, Ichigo, he's like, Yohaba's going to be a little bit, like, I'm not really your enemy. And he's just like, no, I don't give a fuck. Did you destroy Soul Society? He's like. Yeah. Answer the it's question. Game fucking on. It is game on from that moment. Hold this part of that scene is Ichigo does not just arrive. He throws his sword in front of him. Yes. I, yeah. I, yeah. He fucking. The minute it's thrown, he looks down. He's like, what? And then he's 
right there. Well, and also Yuha Baha was the only one that knew that was Ichigo. There was multiple scenes of when he first shows up and just, you know, absolutely glacks Mr. Domino, um, where everybody's like, what is that? Who is that? And Yuha Baha's like, that's Ichigo. And he's like, yeah. let's go. He's like, he's like, oh, time to go kill some more people. Yeah. And then the sword appears right in front of him. And I wrote down, Yuha Baha was legitimately surprised when that happened. He's like, oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> I was like, yeah, get him, get the him, boy. get him. So I so I didn't write this down. This is a thought I'm having now. You think the only reason Yuha knew it was Ichigo was because he's the only one that could sense the Quincy mixed in? Because Ichigo has now awakened his Quincy powers a little bit and his spirit energy should be kind of weird? That could potentially be the reason why, but I don't think Yuha Baha subconsciously uh, knew that at I don't this think point he because knew that until he, he saw- doesn't realize yeah. that he has the Quincy in him until he sees the blue vein later. But that, oh, yeah. that could have also have been the reason why he was able to tell. But I don't think he realized the Quincy connection until later. I think he felt the spiritual pressure and then just immediately was like, ah, well, this pain in the ass is obviously Ichigo. That makes sense. I'm a pretend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Headcanon it. That's the uh, word of this episode. You just throw it in the headcanon. Uh, I have let's... an amazing headcanon for next episode. Okay, all right. And then I have uh, the fight did not last long, but it was still a beautiful fucking it fight. Was, yeah. It was really, really well done. And I just immediately go straight to uh, Yuha Baha stabs Ichigo in the neck. <laughs> I, I mean, that was pretty fucking bad. He's like, he's immobilized, but he's not dead. Yeah. He's like, what and is I it thought called? it was interesting. I don't know if they ever talk about this, but Yuha Baha was like, yeah, I uh, stabbed him in the neck. He's probably still alive. Let's take him to the castle while I will, where I will revive him and then put him under my control. I was like, does he have that ability? I was like, what the fuck is he? He's just putting them. He's putting him in a camp and just rewriting his brain. Yeah. They're based off Nazis. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what's a uh, Ugrim's uh, name? Hashwalt? Hashwalt. Yeah. He, he refers to him all the time. And I was like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> For a split second. So obviously the stab in the neck is where we learn about what we've already talked about, the blue vein that is on Ichigo's neck now. And that is when Yuha Baha finally puts it together where he's like, hmm, maybe using Kilge to trap you was not the play. And he, yeah. then he starts talking about how Ichigo was thrashing and unleashing his spiritual pressure at such an intense like amount when he was trying to break out that all of the bits of spiritual pressure that left him when they came back into him, they were mixing with Quilge's Quincy powers and going back into his core. And then when it seeped into his core, it drew out memories within Ichigo's own core. So he was able to activate his Quincy abilities quicker than what he was supposed to. It's fucking insane, though. Ichigo doesn't even know how to use it, but instinctively uses Blue Vein to yeah. protect himself. Which would make sense how a lot, maybe it's an instinct move for the Quincy's as a whole. Because that would make sense how they're able to block so quickly, especially yeah. like Yahya and stuff like that. How they're able to immediately block where it needs to go. Like, it's an instinct thing. I mean, you saw As not Like, he's using it on his eyeballs, even. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't think they can track it fast enough with their eyes. So, I'm sure it's an instinct thing where it's like, the body reacts. Like the the hero that the, uh, the Iran car have. Exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. And that's when we get a couple other information. Also, where Quilgay's Jail is unable to requain, restrain Quincy's. And Yuha Ba says that he clearly knows that Ichigo clearly knows nothing about himself, including about his mother. And the plan was to always take Ichigo away and then slowly re-educate him. Yeah. And that's when Ichigo loses it. And he's like, what are you talking about, my mom, bitch? Come yeah. at me. Yeah. And that's when we get the sad song from the OGM yes. that they played that oh, remix. They brought it back. That and it thing was, was so incredible. Nice. They started playing that. I was like, dude, do you remember high school playing on the iPod? Yeah. I was like, dude. And we're talking OG iPod. This ain't no iPod touch air. We're old. We're ancient. We okay. it was an iPod. It was the video. It was the and video. It, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was like the squared one where we mm-hmm. still had the big wheel. Yep. Incredible. And we would sit. We would play that during our math class. And then we watch Inuyasha on it also yep. during math class as well. Good times. I fucking love that song. Just so fucking good. And uh, let's see. The sad song. So obviously Ichigo gets fucked up again. He's about to get killed. And that's when we find out that they had reached the limit of working outside of the Schottenbreich. I don't know how to pronounce that. And have to return to the Wannenreich. What the fuck is any of that, Pythes? Uh, I don't know. I ran out of manga. <laughs> okay. I can't write down the German translations if I don't have the manga. Well, it's just like, I just didn't know they had a time limit is all. Well, yeah, and they, the, what is the, they're working outside of the shot and right, like, what, what is that? Uh, they can't, specifically Yuha can't stay out of their home base for that long, which is why when they invade the next time, they fuse Soul Society with their area. 
Mm. Oh, okay. okay. I, all right. I didn't even realize that back then. Yeah, it's all coming together. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And that's when this is also when we get the grand reveal, which we've been talking about the whole episode already of Aizen fucking with Yuha Baha senses. This is when he's like, they should have had a lot more time. But I thought what was very interesting is that Yugram knew and Yuha Baha Mili knows that he knew. And he's like, you didn't tell me. And he's like, well, he's like, would that have changed you, anything? It wouldn't have stopped you, you yeah. know? And he's like, and then Yuha, where I feel like Yuha Baha has been so open about just lacking his subordinates. For Yugram, he's like, all right, like, bestie, no he's problem. Like, I guess. I mean, he's the other half of Yuha's heart or whatever the fuck the plot is with them. Yeah, it's something. Yeah, it's, I don't remember it. It's, it's something in there. I just know he's overpowered. Yeah, he's fucking Yugrim's baller. And that's when we get Ichigo do his last stand when they're trying to leave through the portal. And Ichigo gets his fucking Bankai broken like an idiot. Where yep. you think if Ichigo just stayed down, his Bankai would have been fine. It would have been beat up. But yeah, it would have been fine. I mean, how how is he? Nothing has even scratched his Bankai yet. How is he supposed to know? <laughs> True. 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 And that's when we get the uh, goodbye from Yuha Baha. The and closing to Ichigo line. As my son born in the dark. Ooh. I remember reading that and be like, oh, this is crazy. Yuha also has some pretty good lines, just like Yama. Yeah, he he was yeah. cold. He was cold They're as fuck. They're both like the fucking old men from both sides were incredible. And it's like, I didn't even talk about the part where like uh, Kiraku and the guy he was fighting, they were both kind of going back and forth where it's like, oh, I think you misjudge like who's going to win this fight. And Kiraku's like, no, I think you misjudge. And then, you know, we know who misjudged. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think what, what, uh, the guy fighting Kiraku goes, He's like, well, we're inspired by our boss, too, so we yeah. got, you know, fuck you. It's like a pissing contest between two old men. It's like, yeah, no, my leader's going to win. No, my leader's going to win. It's like, oh, uh, we know how this is going to go. Ichigo's not killing him, so it's going to be game over for Yama. Ichigo tried very hard, man. <laughs> yep. And then the last thing I have for episode seven is obviously the ending. We get to see the original Gote 13 and then the one guy with the bone sword, which I already touched on. Anything we missed by these? All right, so in that ending... Uh, the last thing you see is a candle, and inside the candle you can see Yama, and then the candle's blown out. Yeah, yeah, I did see that, and I was like, oh, that's touching. I, I, I was very sad. All right, well, I'm going to out myself again. I didn't watch the whole ending. <laughs> 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 I, I saw the first part. I was like, yeah, that's cool. I've already seen all of the screen caps individually. I'm good. I just wrote, the internet is mad horny over the OG Gote 13. Yeah, especially isn't one the, okay. So I was, might be wrong. Isn't the pink haired Gote thirteen? Isn't that a dude? Who the the, uh, ch- the chick with the eye patch? Yeah, I think that's the girl. And people are really crazy over her. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, I yeah. was gonna say people are going crazy over here. But I thought I saw someone say that it was a guy. I mean, how? As far as I know, Kubo has not talked shit about that at all. So we don't know. Okay. Yeah, he okay. just drew him and was like, "Yeah, these." They exist. Yeah, he just woke up one morning and was like, yeah, this is going to be fucking dope. I fucking love when he drops stuff like that, though. Mm-hmm. It's always so random. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. All right, so uh, let's we'll see. What the fuck was my next point? I just had it, and I lost it. Oh, yeah, Sasakibe. So we see Sasakibe with the assist, and he might be directly responsible for Yuha losing. So I think that recontextualizes the earlier attack, and that's more of a revenge Ah, then, I, that that would make a lot of sense. Sending overkill to just jab him with a fucking thing. It's and it's a direct like, hey, fuck you. Here's your boy, the boy that did that to me. He's gone. We're declaring war. True. Yeah. That's also kind of like you know you can think about it because I'm sure Yama's not kind of that guy, but it could have been like, hey, here's the hero of your last war. Like he's the guy who stabbed me in the back. Like this is your hero. He's fucking dead. We're coming. He's gone. So I think that recontextualized that entire scene for sure. Uh, so when they were talking about Yama going soft, uh, Sam, I like the way you put it. I didn't go for, like, old samurai. I went for Emperor Augustus, the first emperor of Rome. Because they had a brutal fucking civil war. He had do- he had bands of his dudes roaming the streets, killing political dissidents. And then as soon as, like, he defeated Antony and Cleopatra, he's, like, the, he's, like, the most chill guy that ever was. He's all forgiving. <laughs> I'm going to adopt all Antony's kids. It's cool. He's the patriarch. He's the father of Rome. He's everybody's cool dad. Okay. Yeah, that's another yeah. way to look that, at it for that's sure. A good way that's, to put it too. That's interesting. That's a more historical take yeah. on it. I I have read the Twelve Caesars like nine times. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that book's fucking awesome. Uh, let's see something something. Oh yeah, so when they summon all those extra like Quincy's. That fucking freaked me out because that's just like the kill squad. They just started sending out the firing squads to solve everybody. 
Yeah, they 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 really did. Like, all right, we killed the problem guy. Uh, everybody, come on in, finish it. And then I wrote, "This is completely different from everything else." Eisen and the Af- the Espada were fought like in a fake Karakura town, and when like Grimjow and his boys showed up, Ikaku and Yumichiko were like, "Okay, we're gonna put up some cordons. We're gonna make sure all the people are away." Like the highest body count Eisen got was when Yami sucked up all those people's souls, and like the very first time they showed up. True. Yeah. So like, they go from uh the 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 Iran car take no bodies to the Quincy's take everybody. True. That's true. True. But I, listen, I don't know if this is an official body count, but what was Eisen's body count when he showed up to the real car car town and was walking around killing everybody? Uh, I don't remember. It was probably a couple hundred. Because he was just crushing them with a spiritual pressure at that point. Yep. I remember. And that's when Gin turned on him. The this boy. is. Couple hundred compared to like a thousand dead in seven minutes. True, true, true. Way different, massive scale. And I wrote, so I wrote hardcore PTSD for Ichigo because he's stuck in the jail. We just got through an arc where Ichigo is freaking out because he couldn't save anybody because his powers were gone. Now he has his powers and like full Can't bring do shit Ichigo, about it. Full bring Bankai Ichigo is stronger than he's ever been. And oh fuck, even that is nothing. True. True. What if just like deep down inside of him, it just caused him to just relapse? Like, Uncle Tsukushima, <laughs> oh, <laughs> like no. save me, save me. That'd be kind of crazy, actually. Mm-hmm. Like that's how bad he's freaking out. But I feel like he held composure pretty well. He was obviously stressing, but I don't think he was having a full on like breakdown. He he the he, he did that later. And then I wrote. So Ichigo goes into the Soul Society. No triumphant music. They didn't play number one. Oh yeah, one. they didn't. Not at all. True. Yeah. And then I wrote, Ichigo is so mad when he's watching Byakuya die that, like, his spiritual pressure is making the rain turn to steam off of I, him. Dude, I love that little tidbit. Yeah. I was like, dude, yeah. that's so Amazing. fucking good. Because it's like when you're mad, you get heated up like that. Yeah, and it's – so I wrote, uh, Byakuya asking Ichigo to protect him is heartbreaking because Byakuya is a very proud man. He's a noble. He's he's the why ask someone to do something you could do yourself. Yep. And he's like, please, oh my God, Ichigo saves all society. Yeah, and that's why I feel like it was that final breakthrough where it's like, I don't think Byakuya has ever directly shown that side to Ichigo. And that's why I think like when he did it, like it was just that point where he was like, listen, it's a all or fucking nothing. And he's like, like, please just get it done. And even that scene I talked about in the Fulbring arc, as far as I know, Ichigo was not around to hear that conversation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I was saying. I don't think Ichigo has ever been in the room to know that Byakuya is like his boy. It just kind of been like a mutual understanding. And then I wrote, uh, I wrote down the meme of like, uh, shows up, tells Ichigo he's a Quincy, refuses to elaborate, leaves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then I believe that's the end of episode seven. Yep, correct. Yep. 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 Everything else was stuff I said already, like the candles being blown out. And, uh, yeah, on to episode eight. All right, we're on the home stretch. This I could title this one the After the War episode because <laughs> this is where we get the nice little recap and see what everybody was doing. And finally, uh, by the way, i got to give a huge shout-out to Isane here. Squad 4 is coming out to heal everybody, uh, finally. And Isane is the one who asked the question that I was thinking, why the fuck are we not out there? And that's where we figure out that Yamamoto specifically told Unahana, do not come out no matter what. And then I was like, oh, that's a little sad. Yeah, it's sad, especially because Unahana knows what she could do. Yeah, and yeah, and it's like, like Isane doesn't, Yamamoto does, and Yama was like, "Listen, you're my like, you're my backup. Like, you're like, if I go down, you need to be there." Because he's never going to rely on Ichigo. True. Yeah, that's, that's, a good that's point also as well. very true. Till yeah. the day he died, you could even argue that Yamamoto refused to rely on Ichigo. Remember, remember what we said last time: the real goat who called Ichigo. Yeah, Akon, Akon baby, Akon, Akon. Oh, yeah. Here's a note I forgot to go over last time. So so when Ichigo is coming in and people are kind of sensing him, it shows all of his friends and also Komamura. Oh, that's it's cool. like Shin- Shinji and Rukia and Renji, and they're like, Komamura's there. I'm like, yes, Komamura, Ichigo's best friend. They talk so much. I was about to say, I'm like, have they ever spoken? Maybe they had a couple of exchanges. Talk once, and Komamura goes, no, don't fight Aizen. Give it a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Best buzz since yes. that day forward. He's like, I like back, this kid. Back to what you were saying. Listen, I'm a little all over the place on last episode. We're going to hop all over the place. Um, I wrote, Shinji is here, where they're in the squad four barracks, 
and he looks fucking untouched. What I thought yes, about already. The He's, whole fucking time I was he like, he looks pretty and beautiful. Like, hmm, what were you doing? <laughs> Sakanade is a hell of a zon talk too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If I was like saw fucking Shinji walking, I'd be like, where's your scars? Like, show them to me. You need healing, and he's probably like, uh, no, I healed already. It's yeah. like, yeah, my ass. Everyone was all fucked up. Hanatoro's like, Ichigo, come here, dude. I got, I got, I got to heal. He's like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but following that, we do immediately learn Ichigo's there, and he's talking to everybody. And Renji and Ruki are officially no longer in critical condition, so they're stable now. But I mean, did you see Renji's fucking face? He's yeah. just bandaged them. Yeah, like and then crazy. I also wrote like, there's a part where Ruki starts to have a heart to heart with Ichigo, kind of like, hey, like I'm good now, and. I don't know if you guys noticed because he talks slightly after that, but the whole time the heart to heart's going on, it cuts from uh, Rukia to Ichigo. Rukia to Ichigo. Each time it cuts to Ichigo, Shinji's just standing right behind him doing nothing. I'm like, can you leave? Like, can I get a moment of silence? Like, what the fuck are you doing here? He just wants to know. He's He's, a curious guy. He's just eavesdropping. It's all right. Go outside the room. Like, you don't got to be there for it. Like, you showed me where it is. Leave now. Hey, they're homies, okay? He trained them. Already talking to Ichigo, and then Ichigo walked off. He's like, no, no, this conversation's not done. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. He's like, so I'm just going to stand awkwardly behind you now until you're done, and then I'll I'll finish. Yeah, that's how it goes. (laughs) And then uh, we get the captains where uh, we find out that Yama's body couldn't be found at all. You all destroyed the whole fucking thing, which I thought was, uh, ha ha, get wrecked. <laughs> well, I think they found, what, like a piece of his sword? They had the sword. Yeah. They couldn't find any of the body. Uh, Biaki and Kapachi both survived. But um, this poor guy, by the way, they're having like a little captains get together talking about how they can't find any Yama's body. They're grieving. Soifan's being an absolute fucking nag. This poor guy comes in and is like, hey, like Biaki and Kapachi, they're good, but they might not ever be able to return to be captains. They might not again. wake up, is and what he Soifan says. And Soifan fucking pops off on him like, you shut the fuck up. What are you doing? I'm like, what She's the grieving. hell? She's grieving, so she's upset. She's I'm, like, I'm just doing well. my what job. Is... Being a child is yeah. what she was doing. Yeah, don't yeah. shoot the messenger. It's literally a saying. This isn't the fucking Spartans. Like, I do God like damn. that fucking Kenzie walks in, and he's like, yo, shut your mouth. Yeah, he's like, come on. And even Kiraku, I give it to him. He's like, let's not fight everybody. Relax. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, all right, fair play, fair play. Um, let's see. We get Ichigo being summoned by Mayuri, where Mayuri tells him, like, hey, can't fix your Zanpak toe, homie. They, he says, um, the only thing that can fix a Zanpak toe, which he reveals later, specifically speaking about Shikai's, is the owner's mind, spiritual pressure, and a bunch of time to infuse them all back together, which is what happened with like Renji and all that stuff. But a destroyed Bankai can never be restored. I love how uh, Ichigo goes like, oh, okay, I'll just take my sword and fuck off. Yeah, yep. And then this is the first time actually in this conversation we see Kon. Run by in the background, being chased I, by yeah, a bunch I, of Mayuri's people. I forgot he was there. Yeah, which is, I think you know, but that was like a side story or something where it shows how Mayuri ended up there. Isn't that correct, Pythes? It, every now and then in between the chapter pages, he'd just have like, oh, here's here's some stuff going on. And then, yeah, Cone just gets to Soul's side. And he's yeah. been... Urahara sends asking, him, right? Yeah. 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 Like... Cone's been gone since before the Fulbring arc. So, yeah, that's how he gets there. But it's the first time we've seen the Thousand Year Blood War arc. But where's and my woman? while they're hanging out, Mayuri and Ichigo, which I thought was really cool, Mayuri personally invites Ichigo. He's like, hey, come with me. Come see the Squad Zero. And he's like, oh, okay. I that was sure. actually kind of cool. He's like, well, I guess if I have to go, I guess yeah. you should come and too. And I like that Mayuri was like, I don't want to go. But it's like, if I'm going, I mean, come on. And he's just like, okay, so there's a happy little fucking puppy. When we get to go see the most disappointing characters in the series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which, yeah. I mean, I feel like it, it, it's it's got its thing. So I mean, um, they're there for the plot. Yeah, this is where we get a bunch of backstory, a little bit about the Serite, which I thought was interesting. Um, the walls that have been constantly ar- down around the Serite, as in the OG Serite arc, they're not supposed to be down all the time like that. They say it's been so hectic here in the Soul Side that they just kept them down. They're normally supposed to be up with the Squad Zero up there, but they get sent down in time of emergencies. That was that. I remember reading that and losing my mind because I was like, oh, yeah. They did just kind of fall down from the sky. Yeah. yeah. And I did like how they handled flashbacks in this where they kind of just like fuzz in. They go like, eh, and then they go back to the flashbacks and they come back. And it's like, oh, okay. All right, cool. I I'm got like, it. Yep. Yep. Makes sense. And then we get the combined strength of the squad zero is greater than all of the 13 court guard squads, even though there's only five of them, which that makes sense. And this is when we meet uh, Pythes' favorite design characters in the whole show. They come down in a giant uh, pipe that is very uh, resembling to the stuff that Kukaku does. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. And I wonder if somehow (laughs) and then we get a couple of information about like the squad zero reacting with the or 
interacting with the current captain. We Shinji knows Kirio, which is the pink haired one. I don't the know cook. how I don't remember that in the series. Was that ever referenced? Is that an off screen thing? Uh, do you remember when Kisuke was becoming captain of squad 12? Yes. And he, Yori was having issues because the last captain was leaving and that captain was like a mother figure. That was her. Oh. Because they he said, oh, she went to squad zero. Oh, yeah, they totally said yeah, that. Okay, yeah. I, I 100% remember that now. Got it. That's, That's the eyes in flashback. Way, all the way back and turn back the pendulum. Okay. Yes. Totally get it. Baller. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm glad I asked because she said that. And I was like, I don't know if they showed that on screen. And now I know yeah, they and did he, show that. And she asked about Hiori too. And I was like, how mm-hmm. the fuck? Mm-hmm. Which she was also not in this arc at all, huh? No, we don't see Hiori or my girl. Okay. Just saying. We cut that scene. That's supposed uh, to be in episode one. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we get, I wrote a little tippy here that Unahana learned her healing techniques from Tenjiro, which is the healing guy with the spa. The dude with the hair. I love that yeah, guy. Yeah, so he he taught her how to do all of the healing, which I thought was pretty fucking cool. Um, and uh, they came down to rebuild the 13 court guard squads as ordered by the Soul King, which I don't think they ever do. No, they, they, they hijack people. Well, they take Ichigo, and that's all that matters. Him yes. and Kimbo. So that was my next note. They take Ichigo with them, and then they obviously they have Rukia, Renji, Byakuya. And I wrote here just to double reiterate, goddamn, Soifan is a fucking nag because she just continues this whole time just being a bitch. And then I have a couple of quotes here. Uh, they were... The squad zero is telling them that medical care isn't what you should be doing right now to Unahana and that you're not strong enough to fully restore these three anyways. So because she protested and was like, no, like I'm keeping Ruki and Rinji back here. They're not strong enough to leave. He's like, you're not strong enough to do it. And you should be doing something else right now anyways. And it's like, ooh, baby. And that's when we get the grand reveal that Urahara installed a fucking monitor or projector projector In inside of head. Cone's head. I love that. Which was just incredible. And that's, you know, where we get probably Jose's favorite fucking scene where they're all saying yeah. hi to Ichigo. They're having a good time. And some voice that I don't recognize and totally is not iconic to the series mm-hmm. chimes in from outside of the tent. And we even see... His abs come in with his outfit. I recognize those abs anywhere. Unlike anybody else's in the series. This is when I called it. I willed this to happen. I have said it multiple (laughs) times and I never let it go. Grim Joel never died. Well, I just like, I kind of find it interesting from like, because we were manga readers all the way through and through. Pythes, were you a manga reader mainly or were you an anime watcher? I started off with the anime and then as soon as it started to be weekly, I was like, fuck this. I'm just going to the manga. I think we did the same yeah, thing. I, I, I think, think we, we got were caught anime up. up to a point. Then we went full manga, but we were full yeah. manga, like during the eyes and fight and all that stuff. So I always find this stuff interesting. We're like in the manga, you could argue, I'm not going back and double check, but I remember when it first came out, we were definitely like, it's probably Grim Joe, but there was still a suspension of disbelief where it's like, it could be somebody else. I don't think they showed most of them. I think no. it was like his arm or something. And yeah, that's and about obviously it. we're reading text. So it's like, we don't know who's voice, but in the anime, I mean, you fucking know who's yeah, voice. Yeah, you know who it's it is. It's undeniable. Well, I remember they're like, you see Grim Jow get hit real hard by Noitora, but there's never a scene where they're like, and then he died. But I think Kubo does say that you're supposed to see everyone die or like fade away. And that's the only yes, way to prove that they actually died. I used to be on like forums back in the day, back when forums were a thing people cared about. And there was all kinds of explanations for Grim Jow being alive. I would have been in People, there. It's him. It's him. Well, it so has like, to be him. What's interesting to me is like, because didn't they go back and flesh out how Halibull survived? Did they ever do that for Grim Jow? Well, they fleshed, they fleshed Halibull out in like a side thing that maybe I'll talk about later. Grim Jow, they do give an explanation. And it's he went to level grind. But how, I guess... Was he just never on the verge of death after fighting Ichigo and Noitora? He just got better. Like the the nurses just kind of came and fixed him up after everything was over. So they found him, healed him, and then he's like, fuck off. I'm going to go level up. He he basically went to go level grind. That's why he has the big power boost. He I spent love- all, what, two years grinding. I love that, man. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, that's his whole thing, right? He was the panther that used to eat people to get stronger. So you go, Grim Joe. He knows what to do. He knows. Yeah. Yeah. And then we get the, they bait Ichigo to go out by basically saying, if you come to the palace with us, we can reforge your sword into something resembling your original sword, which, you know, pretty exciting. It'll be good. And then Ichigo's immediately like, hell yeah, let's go. I love how he's just like, well, and it takes a real hard to be like, you know what? Go where your heart is telling you to go, bro. Yeah. We'll be fine. Well, and I liked also because after they hang up on the conversation, Urahara has a quick little chat with Orihime and Chad, and they're like, oh, are you sure you should have told Ichigo that? And Urahara's like, well, it's like, 
I want him to do his own thing, but ultimately we all know that that's going to lead to him saving the soul society. And yep. I was like, ah, oh, like your heart has faith in so him. So much faith in him. I would have been crushed if they went through with the original version Urahara was the bad guy. Yeah. 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 They did that in Air Gear. And that shit sucked. <laughs> yeah, they did. <laughs> All right. I don't know why we're going to hate on Air Gear. I said, I like that anime. I liked I read the whole manga. Oh, okay. And like, yeah, do you want a fucking massive spoiler for the Air Gear series? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Shoot. You know Chill Guy in the wheelchair? Yes. Uh, I totally remember. Ba- <laughs> Sora, I think. It's, 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 it's he's the, the main, main bad, bad guy? guy? Yeah. And we- that reveal sucked. <laughs> we were the uh, we were the uh, anime only, so we were like, "Oh, okay, cool. It just ends here, I guess." That's hilarious. Okay, they well, meet Barack Obama. Yeah, I know. I so that is one of the few chapters that I read because I remember that came out. The internet was fucking freaking out. I was like, "Oh yeah, let me go to shot." And I started reading the couple of chapters before and after that, and they had full blown superpowers while riding the rollerblade and stuff. Like they, it was nothing like the OG anime. Oh, it goes way. It goes way hard. There's. They get to the final fight, and there's a scene where they're doing all kinds of crazy shit, and then the bad guy just goes, oh, yeah, I should probably turn my skates on. (laughs) There you go. I love that scene. It's the worst. Love it. Well, speaking about things that I also love, uh, Kukaku immediately shows up in the next I, scene, baby. I know. Woo! I saw that. I'm like, she looking about pretty fucking damn good. time, dog. She launches them back up to the Soul Palace, of course, and Ichigo is nervous as always about being part of that. And there were a couple of cool scenes that immediately followed that. One is um, Ganju was like, oh, are you sure Like we should send him up there? And Kukaku's like, yeah, it's like even if it's going to make our uncle sad. And they see a flashback quick of them, them with Ishin. And I'm like, dude. Aww. Like that's that's a fucking classic, and then we get the reveal immediately after that, which I feel like is the most action packed thirty seconds of the whole fucking show, that the full bringers <laughs> are there with Kukaku. So we see Genjo, Tsukushima, Tsukushima, uh, Tsukushima, third tries the charm, and the clock guy, which I I had to Google his name is Girko. Yes, I'm glad you remembered because I don't. <laughs> I didn't remember. I knew Tsukushima and Genjo, obviously. I was like, all right, yeah, I got it. And then the, I was like, the clock guy, something, you know, he's the, there. The also. Hulk. And then we get up to the squad zero one, and they basically start kind of shitting on Aizen the moment they show up. And I was about ready to throw hands through the computer. They're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> They're like, this is the place that Aizen so desperately wanted to go through. It's like, you take his goddamn mouth out, name out of your mouth. It's like, I don't know what the fuck this is. And then. They talk about, because like Eiji was like, wait, how was I able to get up here? Don't you need like an Oaken to get up here? And that's where we learn that for the Squad Zero, the Oaken is their bones, which were transformed by the power of the Soul King when selected to Squad Zero, which felt to me a little Coraline-y, where it's like, oh, you want to join Squad Zero? All you got to do is let's put the buttons on your eyes. Yep. Like, oh, just let's transform your bones into the Oaken. I'd be like, excuse me? I don't, like, ugh, I don't know about that. This isn't another mother asking you, this is God. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, true, this is true. Yeah. True. But it uh, doesn't always end well if you are a uh, One Punch Man reader. You'll understand that. <laughs> so um, they go I'll on further it. to talk about that there are two ways to either enter the uh, you know the Squad Zero Spirit area. Spirit Realm. Um, or they, the Soul Palace. Palace, Palace yeah. They you can either choose to allow you to come or you just come with them up there, which – Leads me to believe that maybe you saw them one of the times. You could just grab them really quick and go up with them. Grab and you're up to them. Yeah, you're good to go. You don't need a. It's not like a vampire rule. You don't need to be invited. Um, let me see. Then I have. Uh, they talk about Eisen some more about how his goal was to actually use his own spiritual powers to create basically the Squad Zero so that he could get up there. Um, he wanted to take the place of God by creating life and then killing the king and replacing it. They refer to Aizen as evil personified. Where it's like, oh, hey, Ooh, yeah, yeah. I like that explanation. Let's go, it's my pretty boy, nice. My I like boy. it. Yeah, which is really cool because they talk about this like he didn't want to be the soul king. He wanted to be God and replace the soul king. Yep. Like, he wanted to be the decider. And I'm like, yeah, you fucking go, Aizen. Lofty goals. You fucking go. Well, why do you think Tosin followed him? True. Yeah, that's true. True. True justice. I'll make a world of true justice. Tosin is like, I'm in <laughs> all day. Say no more, King. Like, Say less. Who do you want me to kill? Yeah, exactly. Um, and then sh- they do refer to the Quincy's that showed up this time as an a- even greater evil. And I'm just going to refer to them as they. I know I referred to a couple of their names before, but they don't use anybody's name except for the um, the spa guy that we find out at the end. Um I, I thought the him. five floating castles were really cool. I liked when they yep, showed up for yep. a second. I was like, oh, that's cool. It's got to be lonely, though. Some of them look like full-blown villages. They have people that work up there with them, don't they? Yeah, especially Owetsu. 
Or it's two in his honeys. Yeah, yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, there you same. go. I mean, he's not lonely. Yeah. So, uh, because, yeah, I saw him. I was like, oh, cool. Like, they have, like, full-on blizzards. I'm like, wait, isn't it just, like, them that lives up there? But maybe they're allowed to take some people up there with them. Um, we get to the springs, which I know controversial moment. They cut out the scene where you get to see uh, Rukia's ass. I know that was a People heartbreak all the way around yep. the world that was heard. But Fucking disgrace. We find out that Ichigo only needs one night to make it, you know, all better in the springs. Then he can move on. But Byakia, Renji, and everybody... They're basically going to get chucked back and forth between the, bl- the blood funny. hell springs yep. and the, the water hell springs, whatever it's referred to. And um, that's one of the last things we see for episode eight, except we get to see the soul king is awake and we see that he's like a blue crystal figure sort of thing there. And that's how they end episode eight. That's just fire. Pythes, anything we miss episode eight? Uh, well, I wrote down about Rookie's ass. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, sure- the internet was quite upset. I made sure to write that in there. Then I wrote, uh, fuck this entire reboot. This series is trash now. <laughs> uh, let's see. I, I wrote down, I decided why I don't like the way the OP is, is because it reminds me of Naruto opening. Okay. I well, could, I, uh, I'm going to disagree with everything know. you just yeah. said there, because Naruto openings are, are some of the most fire openings known to man. Wait, which, Specific- which Naruto, though? Like, Shippuden or? Shippuden. I don't mean in terms of quality like it's bad. I mean... It doesn't feel like a Bleach opening. So you mean it's more like that kind of poppy? Because uh, Bleach openings have been more, I don't know, like almost hard rock and a little bit fast-paced? It's, it's just not Bleach, man. Okay, well, can I tell you guys something? I'm going to have to break my girlfriend's heart on. Um, so we're going to Anime Expo. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, Jose. You haven't bought a ticket. But the Royal We, we're going to Anime Expo. And they're having a special concert with a bunch of Japanese bands that are going to be there. And some of them are like they've done like the Tokyo Ghoul ending. They've done um, – a couple of different series like Psychopaths and stuff Kaisen. like that. So, yeah, one of them is the the person that did the Jujutsu Kaisen ending, which, if you recall, is the one where they're all dancing and stuff. I fucking love which that is one. Which fucking 10 That's out of 10 such ending, a right? good one. So I saw that they're going to have the band they because they list the shows that they did. And they're like, oh, Oshioko is going to do um, – he did the Jujutsu Kaisen ending. He's going to be there to perform or you whatever. And I instantly bought tickets. was like, fuck yes. Yeah, you I remember you be, texted us. You have like, to be an Anime Expo badge holder and you have to buy tickets. So it's a double. And it's taking place in the Novo. So I was like, fuck yes. My girlfriend, she loves that ending. It's like her all-time favorite ending. You know, probably the only beat by the opening for Tokyo Avengers. So I told her, like, yo, the fucking ending for Jujutsu Kaisen people is going to be there. It's going to be fucking awesome. We can watch those people. It's going to be great. I Googled it, um, as I do, and I just wanted to double check because I was like, I was I was doing my video about panels to go see Anime Expo, which just came out if you want to check it out. Um, I did not remember that there is two endings to yeah. Jujutsu Kaisen. It's the second one. And one of them is really <laughs> shitty. And the second one is the one that is going to be performing at the Novo. So I have yet to break her heart to let her know that that is not going to be the one that's going to be I there. I want but you just, to record her face as you're like, oh, are you ready for it? It's instead going to be the second one that nobody likes, that nobody remembers. Okay, so Sam, this is how you tr- you test how much she loves you. You're not going to tell her, and the only way she'll know is if she watches this episode. <laughs> yep. yeah. and then when we go I'll just gaslight her she'll be like what the fuck they didn't play the song that is so weird that is so weird <laughs> I cannot believe they didn't play that song no you got what you didn't hear it they played that was the first song it's like oh you were in the bathroom <laughs> it's, it's okay I know it was a, like a four hour show yeah sleeping yeah it's like ah, I don't know uh, You maybe next time when they come back again we'll, we'll see them because yeah she's not going to be happy so all right, so I wrote down more stuff about Grimjow because he's the best. Let's okay. go. So I wrote, this is Grimjow's old look because you could see it. You saw the abs. You saw his old Hakama pants. Yeah, he's wearing the white pants, the, the, the what is it, like the cut-off cropped uh, jacket. So I wrote, is part of the, whatever deal they made with Kisuke is that Grimjow just gets new drip? Okay, so I like that new drip book very much, especially because <laughs> it's all black. He keeps the uh, he keeps the spotted jacket. I'm like, my guy looking fly as fuck. Maybe they Spoilers. were just tired of seeing him walking around half naked. I I like to imagine Grimjaw walks up and is like, so drip right? And in uh, Keith case, like I get, I'll work on that. I guess <laughs> he's just like, I got you, buddy. No, I worries. feel like Keith would be happy about that. He's like, yo, keep me some clothes. Like, yeah, like let's go. He's like, finally, like, put some clothes on, bitch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tired of staring at your hole. So they left out a scene that I made up in my head, and this is the headcanon I was talking about. <laughs> I'm ready. Where all the captains are talking about Yama being dead and Soyphone is Fortnite dancing in the background because the Bankai is gone. <laughs> yeah. like, like, finally. finally. 
and apparently they still have Shikai. So that's a that's just a net positive for her. So this is this is full on. Uh, this one is tinfoil hat conspiracy theory <laughs> mode. Okay. So, so I was watching the ending, and I was like, "Is this ending like symbolic foreshadowing?" Because it shows a bunch of bloody Shihawk shows. That's the final shot. It's a bunch of bloody Shihawk shows, and what appears to be three captains' robes in a pile with Zangetsu on top. And does that foreshadow the three captains that we lose? Yama, Ukitake, and uh, Unohana. Oh, and then, it might. And then it, that's Ichigo's old sh- Shikai. That's old Zangetsu. So yeah, is the butcher that, knife. Yeah, so I'm thinking maybe that's the symbolic foreshadowing of this is Ichigo's idea of what Zangetsu is, and he he loses that too, and he gains the real Zangetsu. Mm, that's oh, very interesting. I like that. Oh, very I insightful. I mean, even if that's not true, I am deeming it to be true right now. I think that's that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. It's got to be that because that is a, too incredible of a coincidence to line up. And the fact that they even talked about it, I was like, yeah, you're not getting, you're not ever getting your old Shikai back. It's just not going to happen. It's like we're going to change it into something else. And then his whole world is basically shooken by the fact that he's a Quincy now. I'd also like to point out I'm, I'm really sad we lose full bring Bankai so, so soon. Not me. Because it's a real – I like the cool design with the X's on the on the arms and stuff like that, and the gloves. I think he got gloves from it. I like the way the coat looks. I like you can kind of see the white robe underneath. Yeah, I like the spiky bits on his bonkai. I agree. I wish it stayed. The aesthetic is really nice on that one. Really nice aesthetic, but I mean, I really like the dual wield. Yeah, um, yeah, I so definitely, I, I definitely like his uh, future bonkai. Um, I was so happy when I pulled that in Brave Souls. <laughs> All comes back yeah. to that shitty game. Speaking of which, Pythes, I, they just gave me uh, Isane in a swimsuit from that like free uh, six star pull. Is there? Um, should I log on and try and get my Isane? Yeah, I mean, go, I, go for it, I got lucky. You so might, I, you yeah. might as well. They're also doing a free thousand year blood war summon with the actual good new versions of uh, Yama and Yuhabaha and a uh, I, Aizen. Yeah, but I I completely stopped Rave Souls. I'll go back if I get my Isane. If not, I'm putting it off for another. Year. Yeah, load it up and give it a shot. Uh, and that's the end of my notes. Do you guys have anything else to add? No. no. I mean, that's we covered a lot there. Those were – I was watching it, and I was kind of taking notes. I was like, man, I'm taking a lot of notes because it was so much stuff that happened throughout all these episodes where I was like, man, they were good. They were real good episodes. They went by really fast. Yeah, they did. They were going to slow down now. Yeah, which is like – and I kind of like to sometimes watch it, and I kind of I kind of try to put myself into the – like eyes of if I was watching this week to week, how would I feel? So whenever an episode ends, I'm like, okay, so imagine I had to wait a whole week for that episode to come out. Like most of the time, like that would fucking suck. As a matter of fact, the one episode where Yuha Baha and Yamamoto are fighting, it ends with him getting slashed right across the chest, but it stops right there. And you don't find out what happens to Yama until next week. Yeah. Cause I, I, I think all you see is that like that blood splatter and that's mm-hmm. about it. Yeah. And I was like, man, imagine you had to wait a week to watch that. It'd be brutal. But well, as a binge watcher, part, it's it's a pretty 10 out of 10 experience. The only good part about that is I was really lucky to have a couple friends at work who also love Bleach. So you co- you go into work the next day after the episode airs and you just talk about it. True, true. Yeah, I feel like that's one of the things with a lot of these TV shows, kind of like uh, Game of Thrones is the most relevant one I could think of, where – I mean, I would say half the fun is watching it week to week and then talking about it with the everybody. discussions afterwards. And it's like it wasn't just like your average, you know, like book reader or anything. It was like everybody was into it. Yeah. And I feel like Bleach was the same sort of way in terms of anime where everybody had waited so long, especially a lot of the old people. Where it's like if you even knew a little bit about Bleach, you were fucking there. Yep. I mean, it was it was floating all over Twitter. I mean, we were hell excited when we found out that it was coming back. And I think. Was it me or you? We were like, I'm calling Bleach is coming back for this announcement. Yeah. 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 And it happened, and I was like, I'm a god. I stayed up to like four in the morning for that announcement. Yeah. yeah. I think me and Sam reacted in- to it live or something. Incredible. Yeah. So good. You just kind of knew it was coming. It yeah. was like, I feel like there were lesser shows that had just as much demand. I'm thinking, like, I'm pulling, pulling one off the top of my head. The Devil's a Part Timer. Had a very rabid uh, fan base as well, but they had like a solid, like, I don't know how long, like five years or something where they had no season two. That got one. And I was like, okay, fucking Thousand Year Blood War has way more fans, way more demand. People are buying way more merch, way more everything for that. The manga sales are still pretty fucking ridiculous. They have to bring it back. There was only a matter of time until they bring it back. Yeah. There, there was just not going to be a chance. There was not going to be a world where they didn't bring Bleach back. Um, 
I don't know why they waited so long per se, but I think it was just a culmination of everything was ready for Bleach to come back. Because we just reached a period in the anime industry where people are cool with just putting out like 13 episodes and then fucking off for a year. I'm totally cool with that too. Like think about how stretched out Attack on Titan is and how good the animation is for everything. And like imagine if they just did that week to week. You just get it all on bad. That would suck. Yeah, it, it's, but... it's true. And it's like, I think that would be one of the nice things too where, but it's it's strange because I feel like a lot of the companies, like I'm thinking even like Boruto, Boruto is still going by the old school standards where they just, obviously it stopped now, finally, but before they were cranking that shit out even when the manga was had nowhere to go. Yeah, they, they were, were still keeping Boruto like alive. Crazy. They were still doing all this stuff with that. It was like, that's a very dated and old model that they don't do anymore. One of the last things that also that was fucking Black Clover. When it's yeah. like they they caught up and they did those filler episodes, but I think made the series worse as a whole. So they weren't bad filler episodes by any stretch. But they should have just stopped. It was all light novel stuff. And right? I think that's one of the things uh two episodes were light novel. The rest was just straight filler like just filler. Um I think it's one of the nice things where it's like I would hope Kubo kind of saw how it went with the filler arcs in the old series where he was like, okay I'll come back and do this, but we're not doing any fillers. It's done. It's like, we'll take breaks. We'll get everything done correctly. and We'll get it done. All they're going to do is apparently they're just going to add more fights. Yeah, which yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm all for that, you know? So, and especially with Kubo being so heavily involved in this, I am always down for him to come in and like, hey, this was something I was playing with that I didn't have time to get in the manga. You think we could do it here? And it seems like he has good staff where they're like, yeah, like, yeah, that sounds awesome. Like, apparently, what was I? I just had a point. Oh, yeah, so apparently, like, the, we were talking about the Thousand-Year Blood War. Not the Blood War. Uh, Beard's not always for always with you? Or can't fear your own world? That was it. My brain's not working. <laughs> People are talking about that bitch Tokinata being in the trailer. And I'm like, oh, that can't be real. What if it is? What if Kubo said, to hear, read these books, put shit in? Hey, man. It's going to happen. I mean, that's what I, I was feel trying like it's to say happen. last episode, and you were shitting all over me. Can't because I listen. This can't fear our world was coming out back when I worked at Barnes and Noble still, um, and that was one of the bleach things that I saw flew off the shelves constantly. Like can't fear our world was always being bought. We were always getting new copies in over and over and over. And I was like, it's so clear to me that this is by far the most popular bleach thing that's out right now. Obviously, I think it's the only bleach novel that made its way over here to the U.S. and got localized. Um, but it was so clear to me that there was insane hype. And then I would also double that down with every time Camp Fear World came out for Bleach Brave Souls, people also lost their shit. So I think it was so clear people loved everything that was in Camp Fear World World that they, it just made sense to me that they were going to somehow adapt that. At least I don't think – I'm saying I don't think they're going to do it in Thousand Year Blood War. I think Thousand Year Blood War will end the Thousand Year Blood War arc. But I think they're going to add stuff in that sets up Camp Fear World. It could it it'd be a movie it'd be an OVA I'd be okay with a couple really high budget uh, bleach movies a bleach movie would be fucking oh my awesome God, can't be a world with a go. movie budget behind it as well movie theater let's and go there's a precedent because movies are so popular right now Demon Slayer gets movies yeah. all the time oh dude imagine for the final fight with Aizen and Yuhabaha they do like Demon Slayer did where they do a, a movie theater release of it I'd be okay with it I would go see that night one yeah that would yeah, be fucking same. amazing so so good. I, I, I that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of money right now to be made for anime and movies, and I think they figured it out because like the One Piece movie did just insane numbers, and so did the Demon Slayer movie. The My Hero movies always do well. I mean, all of the movies constantly do well. And then we have the fucking Black Clover movie coming out straight to Netflix. Ooh, like that's like a fire. precedent, right? Right there. They should they should totally do Camp Fear and World as a movie after Thousand Year Blood War. I 100 percent think that's the play. I went to go see that new Makoto Shinkai movie in theaters. Yeah, and let's get your review. Uh, wasn't worth it. Thank you. I agree. It's <laughs> by far the worst one of the main three. I only put it above Garden of Words because that shit was boring. I don't even remember Garden of Words, and I also saw that in theaters, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that one sucked. It was kind of like an older 30-year-old lady hitting on a high schooler, so I didn't dig it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, let's call it. I think Cat Fear in the World is going to happen. Let us know in the comments down below your thoughts on F that. And, of course, if we miss anything, what you guys thought about these episodes, do let us know. I did a poll on the YouTube channel what your favorite fight was from these episodes. Uh, no surprise. I'm pretty sure the Yama fight is just by far dominating. Yep. Um, but let us know. Of course, then make sure you guys follow us on YouTube, uh, Twitter, Instagram, at the Weebs Guild. And we'll be back next Saturday for another episode. Thank you guys for joining. Sam, Jose, Pythes on the microphone. We'll see you guys next time. 